Liberty Building and Loan. Moving more assets to the Middle East. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. A defense official says it's to boost regional deterrence and increase protection for U.S. forces amid concern that Iran is ready to attack Israel. Israel's military leaders are touring troop and weapons installations amidst intelligence and state media reports. The Iranian regime is close to conducting some sort of attack on Israel. Yoav Gallant is defense minister. And I am certain that the world understands well today what Iran is the terrorist body that incites terror attacks across the Middle East, funds Hamas, Hezbollah, and other forces, and now threatens Israel. Iran has been promising to retaliate for a strike on its consulate in Syria. Israel blames Iran for financially and operationally supporting the October 7th attacks. Fox's Evan Brown, a surveillance tool used by the U.S. government would be renewed for two years under a revised bill that passed the House today, winning enough bipartisan support, though it still also has opposition on both both sides of the aisle. Some critics say a warrant should be required in certain cases to better protect Americans' data collected during surveillance on foreign targets. Abortion rights will be on the ballot in another state this November. The Coloradans for Protecting Reproductive Freedom Coalition says it has enough signatures for a ballot measure that, if passed, would add the right to an abortion to the state's constitution. There are similar votes planned or being pushed for in several other states, including Arizona, with the state Supreme Court this week upheld the near-total abortion ban passed 160 years ago. Abortion's legal in Colorado with no restrictions on how far along the pregnancy can be. Fox's Chris Foster. Police still investigating a tractor-trailer crash into a Texas public safety building earlier today. One state senator says that truck was stolen and that the crash was deliberate. Investigators haven't confirmed that. The lawmaker also reporting three people airlifted with critical injuries, three others in serious condition. America is listening to Fox News. Hey, it's Jesse Kelly. Are you still on the fence about owning gold? It's time to pull the trigger with the Oxford Gold Group and buy gold and silver. Nobody can predict the future, but we can't put our head in the sand either. The Oxford Gold Group are the pros. They make owning gold and silver simple and easy to understand. Call Oxford Gold Group right now and you may qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. Call 833-995-GOLD. That's 833-995-GOLD. To my newborn baby boy, the day you arrived was one of the happiest days of my life. Right up there with the day I bought my RV from that guy on the internet and insured it with Progressive. <laughs> what a deal. Just know, son, I'll always be here for you. And by here, I mean in the middle of absolutely nowhere. In my RV. Protect your baby with an RV policy from Progressive. Take as little as four minutes to see what you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> there we go. Look out. How are you? Freaking Friday. Let it rip. Anything goes. It's only me. It's only the Kimmer with Pete Davis, sidekick, producer, and sports rack on your extraordinaire. And the mechanical mangler at the controls. Flounder. And Friday, here we go. 404 741 1230. 741 1230. Let her rip, baby. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, we're in a great mood because my TV died. <laughs> so I'm being dragged into the smart TV modern technology period. And it already scared the crap out of me because now I got to figure out what my freaking Wi Fi password and username is for my cable system. <laughs> anyway, uh, Pete Davis well, and Flounder. It's obvious. It's a system of numbers and letters. I never mind that now. <laughs> I wonder what it is. Saturday. I'm going to get a brace. So I spent an hour at Best Buys. What an ex- By the way, they are so good. In fact, Flounder, remember the other... You guys have been riding me forever, for good reason. I, I'm, I'm not I'm complaining. For good reason, because I, I, I'm, I, you know, I still have my old cable box because I've got you know 80 or 90 hours or more of programming in there that if I take it, the cable box back to get a new one, it's all gone. They can't transfer it over. How is it possible that the modern technology we have today, you can't take the cable box that I got eight years ago or whatever and walk it over to the Comcast to the Infinity Place and say, okay, I'll t- why don't you put whatever I have in there, uh, attach it to the new one, put all the stuff I've saved in there to the new one, and then give me the new one and I'll go home and put it in. 
Okay, when you had the rotary phone, <clears throat> did you go in there and say when they it's came not, out with the flip phone? They're both boxes. They're both black boxes with yeah. cords. When I took my Apple 8 in and said, you guys do a trade in? He goes, we don't, we don't need anything in the 8 They wouldn't now. take mine either. <laughs> <laughs> but mine was all cracked. There's I, nothing in was, there that we want. Mine was broken all to pieces. <laughs> oh, I, but still, I mean, how is it possible that you can't put one cord Why would into you the want new one? To? Because I've got Breaking Bad. I've got all the There's movies. All I've got stuff is Young available. Frankenstein. I've got, you know, hours and Explain hours. It to him. Well, all those hours and hours are on streaming, so you can watch them. All there. right, so now, so how much is that there? app? And then I got to go get the new Netflix app, and I guess it's going to be nine hundred dollars a month to watch freaking television. First, I pay two hundred and eighty dollars a all, month. If either Netflix or Amazon or Hulu or Peacock doesn't have it, you probably don't need it anyway. Well, God, you know, I don't know. Anyway, there, I, I, so I went to, well, I, I won't bore your whole time with this. But, but it's just, the same reason you don't have VHS tapes anymore. I, okay, fine. You don't need them. All right, fine. You don't, I guess we don't need me either, do we? No. Uh, again, again I, I don't even care. You're doing a category. Cameron, Cameron, you should be more like a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, it's dying. They, they stay calm. And underground. They stay calm because <laughs> nothing gets under their skin. Well, here's the funny part. I won't dwell on this all day, but I might because I'm a little worked up. Flounder's been telling me, and, he's, and I've been saying, I don't want to spend $1,200 for a TV. And Flounder says, you idiot, they're like 400 bucks these days. He said, get an LG or a Samsung. And you'll, is that right? I mean, I think those are the ones you suggest. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a LG and a Samsung. So, I mean, and those are pretty, those are the pretty common ones. Okay, so I, so I went to Best Buy and I said, uh, I said, my friend Flounder told me I should be looking at LG and and uh, Samsung's, and before I went, I did this morning, I never uh, spend an hour going into things uh, uh, during the work day. I just don't have that kind of time. So I blew the whole morning. So I was up extra early trying to prepare for it. So and now I'm and now I'm freaking out because I'm already upset that I'm I'm doing this instead of working on the show. So I get into the guy and I said, okay, uh, I need a TV. And uh, I, uh, my friend founder says uh, either the uh, LG or the uh, Samsung. And I actually looked, I, I Googled Best Buy prices on TVs and they had a Samsung for four ninety nine. dollars 99 that's what you were. That flounder was telling me this the whole time. I think you can get it. I mean, what? How, how big is it? Well, uh, I, well, that's the other thing. You have to find out. But there, you know, most of the one I have on the wall now, I think is the, is a sixty five. Most of the of the wall TVs are fifty five or sixty five. And I think my it came with the with the place. I didn't buy it. It was in there when I got her. So I, I'm replacing that one as it is. Anyway, uh, so the guy uh, showed me the Samsung. He said, he said, uh, so he said, uh, well, that was that was like five ninety nine. So we looked at that, and then he looked it up in the catalog, and he said, oh, by the way, that's last year's model, and they don't make that anymore. We have to get you this year's model, and and that's uh, eight ninety nine. <laughs> so anyway, this one, I, and then the first one he suggested was like fourteen ninety nine. I mean, don't God. don't pay anything over four hundred bucks. <laughs> well, I, you can't get anything under four hundred bucks because then he give the old thing. Well, you know, the one you have, uh, the one you want here. I'm going to show you the one uh, for fourteen hundred dollars is is the uh, is one hundred and twenty uh, bippity bops. You know, uh, yeah. and instead of the sixty four bippity bops, because if you only have sixty four bippity bops, you have little gray around the edges. And I said, I will. They're just trying to upsell you. I, know. you, you, you I mean, don't pay I, anything over five hundred dollars. No, well, I did. Well, it's a little too late, anyway. So, I, but I did do some com comparisons, and the fact of the matter is, for another, you know, I, I did the might as well thing. The same thing when I bought my house, and I just kept saying, well, might as well add this, might as well add that, and I did the same damn thing. I mean, final house uh, with the TV, and so for another like 150 bucks, I got I got a Sony, which is better quality and has more stuff. Than the one for four ninety nine or something. So I spent another couple of hundred bucks. But then you know it's one hundred and fifty bucks to have the the Geek Squad come out. And Lord, that was an experience. Uh, 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 Pete was a witness to try to <laughs> to sign that uh, <laughs> reservation. Anyway, so I find I, so it's going to be taken care of. But but it's going to be a smart TV. And yet, yet I don't have the modern box. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through all that. It's, it's, everything's a nightmare. Everything's a nightmare. And of course, I can't wait to go home tonight and, and do and nothing and sit there and uh, you know I guess the softcore point you know girlkiss.com. I don't. I mean, sir, maybe I'll go to a bar and, and just watch their TV. You have a laptop. You can watch things on your laptop. Well, I will try to do that tonight. Uh, there you are now. Anyway, I, I'll stop. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got a million things. Um, uh, Pete, anything uh, in the last 24 hours uh, going on here? Uh, you want to tell them about what's uh, going on this weekend? I will in sports. Okay. And Flounder, how about you? So, plans for the weekend? or uh... I don't know. I may try and hit some golf balls it's, if it's nice. and if It's supposed to be nice to do outdoor stuff. Yep. In fact, I'll bet you, uh, depending on if I can get the set set up tomorrow in my house, I'm gonna. I'll bet you I'll be out at the range to some point late in the day. Although I can't go to the stable in the morning because I'm waiting for him. They give you a 12 hour window, <clears throat> and then they narrow it to four hours later. So a 12 hours. They literally window. told him we'll be there between 11 a.m. and three. He doesn't have to get up early. He doesn't have to kill the whole day. It's just right there. And he complained about 11 well, to three. Because well, because that's the worst time the, of the day. You know why? I'll tell you why it is. Because the only thing I do on the weekends, the only thing my life involves around in the week. 
weekends is that freaking stable. And I go to the stable to make sure I get there before 11 o'clock because if I get there at 10.30, I have exactly enough time to get to the front stable pasture, get those guys running up like they always do, and then I get to get to get to get to uh, uh, Dom and Dylan over in the far pasture on the left, and then I get to go see Stretchy before he comes in at 11 o'clock in the morning because I have to get him to do my selfie with him in the pasture instead of in his stall, which I don't like. And then I've got to get the Frisian. When he gets turned out at 11.15, I get him to see if he's rolling in oh, the mud, which is so much you fun. You have to. And so I won't be able to get any of that tomorrow. So that's your job. None of it. That's a job? The only thing I do on the Saturday is those horses. And now I can't do it. <laughs> your so verbiage said, well, on this opening segment is uh, very colorful. <laughs> Just saying. Hey, that's all I've got, you guys, okay? I mean, this is pretty freaking <laughs> pathetic. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to cry now just thinking about it. What a, what a Oh, you poor ridiculous. baby. You had to go out and upgrade your TV, <laughs> and they're going to come out and do it for you tomorrow, uh, so you don't please. have to go oh, to the stable. Right. Just pour your it on. life is Keep hell. going. How about you, Flounder? Bring, give me a little extra pepper on the sauce here. Just a little something extra. Hang on. Right. Make me look I'll, I'll, I'll just do it throughout the whole show. Jesus, Mary and Joe. God. <laughs> I don't know if I can be friends with you guys. At least you don't have to drive all the way to a Augusta. <laughs> oh, poor, yeah. Oh, poor Pete, you bastard. And all the gas and the mileage. And <laughs> oh, right. Anyway, 311. Uh, we have a story. Oh, I'll tell you, what, let me do one kind of a little happy, funny thing, and then we'll, we have newsy stuff, and I don't feel like talking about it right now, but we will. We got Trump stuff. Oh, the, the, uh, that uh, that really cool black woman who was at the the uh, uh, the chicken place. Uh, Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A <laughs> place with Donald Trump making big news. We got a couple of sound bites of her. Also, some CNN idiots trying to make a racial thing. We are all so fed up with everything being a race-divided thing, we, just, we can't tell you. Also, holy cow, in Memphis, I can't believe the story... There's no such thing as a routine traffic stop. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, quickly. Now, remember the other day, I was talking about the anniversary of the WAX, the Women's Auxiliary Corps for the Army. And that was the anniversary coming up today. And then I said, now, of course, in the Navy, they have the WAVES. And I could not remember what the WAVES stood for. We thought it was wonderfully acrobatic vision. No, we didn't know, we didn't know what it exactly stood for. So, anyway, so luckily now, uh, my friend uh, Peter... Uh, sent me a message and it says, women accepted, here we go, on July 30th, 1942, President Franklin, uh, <laughs> Franklin Roosevelt, it's actually Roosevelt, signed the Navy Women's Reserve Act into law, creating what was commonly known as WAVES, Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service. Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, a vision of the U.S. Navy for World War II to free up the men for sea duty. Again, thank you, Peter. I appreciate it very much. Also, one more announcement, if I can do that right now real quickly before we do a little cowbonga here. But again, this came up before two also uh, from Peter. Uh, sent me a little singing song thing. I mentioned the other day I love barbershop. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, and choruses and choirs. I love, you know, harmony and, and uh, you know, beautiful things like that. So Randy sent me, a, maybe it's Rande. It's R-A-N-D-E. It could be Randy or Rande. I don't know. Anyway, Randy sent me a message and said, Kimber, if you like barbershop, the men's group called Atlanta Vocal Project is having a show at the Roswell Cultural Arts Center, 3 p.m. on Sunday. Okay? Atlanta Vocal Project, Roswell Cultural Arts Center, 3 p.m. Sunday, and I guess they're like a singing men's group. Uh, maybe it sounds something like whatever. Anyway, okay, everybody happy now? We all good? <laughs> You're gonna be there at the barbershop? No, I'm oh, gonna okay. be I'm gonna be watching my TV. In fact, I, in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the stable an extra amount of time on Sunday to make up for it. How much you want to bet that you show up here Monday and the TV's still not working? Oh, it won't be working. Some problem. I guarantee you. I, I promise you right now. I guarantee you right this minute. They're going to get there tomorrow and say, well, you don't have the so-and-so, the verbalator. Well, where the where hell's the verbalator? Well, they thought they told you the store. No, they didn't tell me at the store. I promise you, I'll, I'll tape the whole thing. Ah, uh, thank you. And now... <laughs> Don't forget Flounder's Funnies, sponsored by our good friends Nucky's Hoagies. We don't talk about the subsisters enough. Hot babes, all right. 314. Oh, there's a little... Oh, here you go. Stop his monks. Days can get a little strange. Thank you, Flounder. You You're killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> Are we, I'm, I'm supposed to be talking here? Are we with you? <laughs> 
If you love news and talk, you have to connect with the biggest personalities in the South at thepodcastpark.com. It's more original Atlanta content from Atlanta's hometown talk crew. From legal news to sports and politics and even archives of interviews from years past. Find the podcast that you love and subscribe everywhere you get podcasts. Hey, sandwich lovers. Today is your lucky day. There's a whole new way to roll for lunch or dinner delight with Nucky's Hoagies in the Roswell Corners Shopping Center. Now open. Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell is family owned and operated by the subsisters, Stacy and Shannon, whose love language is food and Nucky's Hoagies, their passion. When you bite into a Nucky's Hoagie, you'll taste the difference. The softest hoagie rolls ever, along with hunger quenching sandwich combinations. Make Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell on Woodstock Road your new favorite spot for lunch or dinner. <laughs> and my favorite spot to get taken care of your stuff is Atlanta Safe House. In fact, hey, it's a camera house are going. Yeah, for AtlantaSafeHouse.com, check out what they have right there on the web. They have a showroom in Ackworth, and I suggest going up there and checking it out. In fact, I, I don't talk enough about their pistol safes. These things are beautiful, and they really are. You know, think about it. Instead of putting it under your seat or in the glove compartment or something, if you have to go someplace, even if something happens, at least if it's locked up, it's locked up. Also, if you're a fairly new gun owner, for example, a lot of families have a little concern about that. Pistol safes are great. Make everybody happy. I, mean, I bought a couple of gun safes. In fact, if I'd taken them down to darn Florida when I retired, I'd still have my medical records, which got lost. And so that was a ball game on that one. And that's why the VAs tell me to go pound sand. Anyway, uh, keep your stuff safe. Unlike the Kimmer, uh, don't, learn from me as a bad example. Uh, your uh, business records and medical records and uh, marriage and divorce papers and uh, things for your kids to go back to school, a living will, your social security card, all that stuff. Uh, things you want to save that are valuable to you protecting your assets. All the great brands. And again, a safe is not that little plastic box you get with a teeny little key at the grocery store or something. That's not it. They've been in business for decades. Jeff and Mark use off-duty police, firefighters, and military to deliver the safes because that's how they care about the people who protect and help America every single day. These are great folks. This is a non-woke company. They really take care of business and they'll take care of you, protecting the whole family. Please tell them the camera sent you. Check them out on the web, atlantasafehouse.com. Convenience is defined as the state of being able to proceed with something with little effort or difficulty. Well, at RBM of Atlanta, we embody this philosophy. Meet our Mercedes-Benz pickup and delivery service. It gives you back time and money. Does your Mercedes-Benz need service? If so, we'll pick up your vehicle that's requiring service from your home or office and bring it back to our dealership for the required service. With over 100 appointments available every weekday, over 50 appointments on Saturdays, and more than 200 courtesy vehicles in our fleet we're here to serve we'll work around your schedule we're here to save you time energy and money rbm of atlanta is a jd power 2023 diamond dealer of excellence for the customer sales experience and georgia's only nine time mercedes-benz best of the best winner we're proud to be atlanta's mercedes-benz connection since 1964 pickup and delivery service restrictions do apply ask your service coordinator or service advisor for details. Hey Atlanta, it's Lowe's for Howard Brothers and Honda Power Equipment. It's time to cut the grass. Yay! Which may mean that it's time to upgrade your mower. Look no further than Howard Brothers and Honda Power Equipment. Honda mowers are easy to start and reliable. You want a mower that makes the job less of a chore and more of a pleasure. And Honda has you covered. Genuine Honda mowers are known for their reliable engines and outstanding performance. Howard Brothers has everything from the premium Honda residential mowers to the Honda commercial walk-behind mowers. The grass is always greener when you take care of it with Honda and Howard Brothers. Hey there, it's Janelle King, host of the Janelle King Show right here on Extra 106.3 FM, where we are unafraid and unapologetic. We explore the topics that matter the most. You can catch us on Saturdays at 4 p.m. and Encore episode on Sundays at 9 a.m. And catch up on past episodes by going to the podcast park right here at Extra 106.3 or wherever you get your podcasts every single Tuesday. Until then, stay unafraid, stay unapologetic, and never stop seeking the truth is the tax deadline causing you anxiety searching for elusive 1099s and trying to uncover any exemptions if so you're not alone every year georgians find themselves looking backwards to file with the irs reporting tax history but what if you were to flip the script not just report your taxes but actually planning for them 
We're Master Plan Retirement Consultants. We're local with offices in Marietta. We work with folks just like you to create a personalized, tax-efficient strategy designed to last a lifetime, a crucial piece to the holistic retirement plan. Do you have a retirement roadmap? You should. It's never too late. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Don't wait any longer. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants, Inc., a registered investment advisory in the state of Georgia. Insurance, tax, and commodity services offered through Frickson Associates, Inc., DBA Master Plan Retirement Consultants. The aforementioned are affiliated companies. The legend Neil Bortz is only on Extra 1063. With daily commentary you'll hear throughout the day. And he's on live with a morning extra every Tuesday morning at 7.30. Atlanta's only conservative news and talk station. Extra 1063. And catch all of Neil's commentary on the Extra app. (laughs) 320. Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder. Happy Letter Rip Friday. How you doing? A little Led Zeppelin here for you. 2016, an American court ruled that Led Zeppelin founders Robert Plant and Jimmy Page must face trial in a copyright row over the song Stairway to Heaven. The infringement action had been brought by Michael Skidmore, a trustee for the late spirit guitarist Randy Wolf who played on the same bill as Led Zeppelin in the 1960s and claimed he should be given a writing credit on the track. My God, so the guy has a lawsuit. Well, okay. I guess there probably meant money in the future or something. Uh, By the way, we have a couple updates on the O.J. Simpson case and on a a case of a marriage that I thought was made in heaven, a a, a special marriage. I was kind of hoping that this would show me the way of happiness for the rest of the Kimmers. Anyway, anyway, we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, Back to the actual program uh, with the Kimmer, Pete, and the Philander. Our birthday list includes the uh, luscious Brooklyn Decker, 37 Decker. years old. Decker, I barely even. Uh, Brooklyn Decker, 37, smoking blonde Sports Illustrated cover model, who's married to tennis star Andy Roddick. She plays Jane Fonda's daughter, Mallory, on the Netflix series Grace and Stupid Whore Mommy, who should have been shot by the North Vietnamese for being a traitor for the... Oh, well, no, I'm sorry. I'm probably, I'm not think this in the actual bio there. Uh, and uh, and then to stay in history, 1861, the Civil War began when Confederate forces, actually it was a militia, South Carolina militia mostly, fired on Fort Sumter in South Carolina near Charleston, by the way, uh, Abner Doubleday, the inventor of baseball, fired the first shot in defense of the fort. And the uh, U.S. Army eventually surrendered. And Fort Sumter, 1861, on this day, it was the beginning. Oh, my pistol. Oh, I just, oh, I just lost my ink. Oh, the, oh, all right, I got to get a new one. Okay. Hey, I don't know. I, no, I got one. I got, I got it covered. I've got extras right there. I've got, I'm like, sure I've got you four do. real fevers. <laughs> Boy Scout. <laughs> Marine, mister. Uh, 323. Our 3 o'clock hour brought to you by our friends at First Liberty Building and Loan. If you need financing to grow your business, visit FirstLibertyGA.com. Uh, 323. We're go- we got some update. Funny stuff. or Not funny for uh, the uh, Jenner family. Uh, the OJ thing and also the marriage thing. We got a whole bunch of stuff. First of all, can we say a kind of a farewell here? Sort of a sad story. And I want to give some credit. I got a couple like police things here we need to talk about. Uh, they said, had to say a farewell to a, a, a canine hero in the Roswell Police Department. Uh, the dog, canine uh, Edo, had a memorial service. Uh, it was, he was cremated. Apparently, he uh, it was a, a Belgian Malinois, Malin, Malinois German Shepherd mix. Uh, he w- was diagnosed with cancer. They had a memorial service for him yesterday. Uh, he was along for the drug and gun seizures, made sure he kept his officers safe. He had been with the Roswell Police Department for four years. They were surrounded by family and friends, fellow officers at the Roswell United Methodist Church Chapel. And they talked about what this dog meant to the people there and what he, what he was like, and God bless him. So he just wanted to a, 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 dog, a police dog as a police officer. So there you are. Uh, now, hold on. Let's go. You want, let's, you want to do the OJ update right here first? That's sure. kind of the, I mean, that, that poor, and, oh, and by the way, um, I, I, I got a couple of memes to go along with this uh, that I picked out this morning because uh, uh, Pete Davis has an update that just came down the line. Now, we, we kind of, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but now it looks like it's getting even worse. And the poor, this poor family's not going to stop for a long time. Uh, a couple of memes. 
Now OJ can finally rest knowing his wife's killer is dead. <laughs> Uh, another, O.J. Simpson has died. In unrelated news, the killer of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman has died. <laughs> There's one of Charles Manson saying, don't worry, O.J., it's a dry heat. <laughs> oh, here's one. Uh, in fact, this is going to lead into you telling the top story on, 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 just on the Daily Mail. Here's what the tweet says. This is how I found out O.J. Simpson died, mind you. And he found out by saying someone saying, poor Chloe. <laughs> Poor Chloe Kardashian, the daughter that he apparently sired. Okay, tell the latest story. On here we go. OJ, the famous story that the the, 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 the wife of uh, Kardashian, the attorney Kardashian's wife's been denying it forever. But here we go, Pete Trail. Tell the little people what's going on. The latest now with OJ Simpson and what he also did. Here's the headline in the Daily Mail. What really happened the night of sex crazed womanizer OJ Simpson and Chris Jenner oh, allegedly God. hooked up in the hot tub? And who else was there if the glove fits? <laughs> oh, Johnny Cochran was there? No. Oh. That's their headline. Oh, that's a he oh I got you. Oh. Robert Kardashian, Nicole Brown Simpson, Chris Jenner, and OJ Simpson are in a hot tub together. No, it's not the beginning of a joke. Yeah. And basically, they get undressed, and she takes one look at OJ, Chris does, and goes, ha, 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 ha. Well, he and he jumps her. Yeah. And I guess Robert said it was okay, and him, him and Nicole watched. And the quote, I'm going to clean it up. OJ said, I blanked that blank until I broke her. Yeah. And she had to go to the hospital afterwards. Yeah. Uh, the, the original uh, thing he told his friends right. was that he was in the hot tub with her. That, uh, one of the theories was, or one of the suggestions was, that Kardashian and OJ's wife, they were both married, uh, went upstairs and left the two of them alone in the hot tub, and that's when he got her. Uh, but OJ said what happened was he stood up, dropped his shorts, she oogled and went nuts, and then he said, and that's when I, you know, he, he, he wrecked that thing. Uh, put her in the hospital, apparently. Supposedly. God almighty. I mean, and Khloe Kardashian is apparently... Now, wouldn't she be blacker? Or, or is that... Could they not prove a DNA thing? If, if, if O.J. Simpson... Because uh, uh, Kardashians, I mean, I she's not real dark skin. Wouldn't they be able to prove that pretty easily? And by the way, why wouldn't she do it? Why wouldn't she? She probably some has. Kind of a test. It's not no one's business. Well, okay, but it, it's everybody's business now. <laughs> Which you want it? No, we just made our business. <laughs> well, the other question is: is if OJ and Chris were in the hot tub, did Nicole and Robert upstairs with them? Sat in a hot tub, yo. Now, and again, if they were all, now, is this is a, a swinger thing? thing? That he was okay with it. That they were swinging a uh, uh, If he left his wife alone with O.J. Simpson in a hot tub while he went off with the other girl, yeah, he was okay with it. Wow. I mean, this is really... Uh... What kills me is they're all... Well, Chris is the only one who knows the truth. Yeah. Still alive. Is Chloe dead? No, there's four people. Why do you keep oh, wanting I'm to put sorry. Chloe I'm into sorry. this? I, I'm sorry. Well, because she, I thought she'd probably figure it out. <laughs> you sick, twisted well, I mind. Don't, you know, they're all Kardashians and Jenners. Earth. I don't know any. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm so Jenner. confused. I don't. I, I don't. I, okay. I know. I know. The guy who used to be a guy, the freaking uh, cathedral champ. What do they call it? Bruce the, Jenner. They, Bruce Jenner was a guy, a and that's all I know. And then there's Kardashians, and then he's a girl, and now there's other daughter. I, blah, blah, blah. So I'm just, you know, I don't know. So they were in a hot tub, and one of them's alive now, and that's it, right? Yeah, Chris. Well, then she should start telling the truth. Otherwise, she's a dirty stinking liar. Oh, poor thing. She well, we know she's a dirty stinking liar. <laughs> oh. We know that. Well, we know she has a good attitude about life. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, OJ apparently made all the people who visited him in his last few days had to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Even the medical personnel who were there during his last days in hospice care... Uh, he told they called his family and said he'd taken a turn for the worst. His kids, uh, Jason and Arnelli, fathered with his first wife, Marguerite, and his children with Nicole, Sydney, who's 38, and Justin, 35, rushed there to be with his side, too. So he had kids from both sides of the family, including the children from the girl and woman he mur murdered. Uh, not much is known about Sydney and Justin's relationship. They were the Nicole kids. It's unclear how much the time spent together after his release from prison. Uh, the well-wishers were not allowed to bring their cell phones. About 50 people paid respects, but he couldn't speak, and he was in and out of consciousness in his last few days. Uh, they, they, I'm sure they had him hooked up to a morphine drip or something. Cause that's well, was he do. afraid he might say something and he didn't want them talking? I guess. Or, or they, they, I, I guess he just didn't want them talking about his last days. Hmm. 
Because he, he apparently, according to this, he was frail and unrecognizable. He went down kind of fast. Yeah, because a couple of weeks ago, he, had, he did a video saying, I feel pretty good, and he was, uh, he was at a park or something, if I recall, or a game, maybe it was at a, a ball game or something. Mm. Anyway, that's kind of... Uh, well, anyway, he's, uh, he's in hell resting now, so that's fine. In fact, there was a, a, one of the memes coming up that showed O.J. sitting in his coffin saying, well, I guess God's going to find out who did it now, or something like that. Uh, some, more, some more of the memes. Um, uh, see, I'm sick of O.J. died without confessing he killed that lady. Now we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Another, O.J. Simpson finally brought the killer to justice. <laughs> and by the way, wouldn't it be great to have a white Bronco hearse uh, leading the way for the funeral? Uh, let's see. O.J. Simpson died on the same day that Ford issued a recall on the Ford Bronco. And by the way, that's the truth. <laughs> uh, and one more. This, uh, this just in karma arrives late. That's from Josh Mankiewicz. Uh, O.J. Simpson has died. The unrelated news. No, God, his other died too. Uh, O.J. Simpson's only going to hell to continue the search for the real killer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my favorite. L.A. jury acquits cancer in the death of O.J. Simpson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> At 3.30, cover Pete and Flounder. Look out. Here we go. Out in September. We've got your afternoons covered, all right, and the morning extras got your drive in from 6 to 10 a.m. too. What about then the politiz- the politization? I don't know how do you say it? Politization. Politiz- politization, if that's right. I don't even know Close if that's right. Close You're doing great, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah the last here. couple minutes. A couple minutes. Yeah, it's good because that just because, became a promo. Like, the, <laughs> yeah. the, the morning extra, 6 to 10 a.m. on Extra 1063 FM and the Extra app. You shouldn't need a degree in finance to choose a checking account. That's why we made Truist One Checking. No trade-offs, no compromise, no hassle. Just the stuff you want from a bank that cares. And that means no overdraft fees, lots of practical perks, and automatic upgrades. Truist One Checking. One simple choice. Visit truist.com slash one. Truist.com slash O-N-E. Truist Bank, member FDIC. Returning to Metro Atlanta, April 26th to the 28th, the Mitsubishi Electric Classic, presented by Venture, is Georgia's only PGA Tour Champions event. Enjoy local craft brews and scenic views of the par 3 11th hole and an exciting atmosphere at the perch. Pick your favorite hole to watch along the ropes or find public seating throughout the course. Children 15 and under receive complimentary tickets with purchase by an adult. Join the party at TPC Sugarloaf in Duluth, Georgia. Tickets available at MitsubishiElectricClassic.com slash tickets. My name is Jamie High, and I have worked for Bruce Hagen for 14 years. Why do I work for Bruce? Because he truly cares. He cares about me, he cares about my family, and he cares about each and every one of his clients. Family is important to him, and he never makes me choose between my family and work. He values me as an employee, but also as a person. At our firm, we are all family, and I wouldn't want it any other way. I am Jamie, and I've worked for Bruce Hagen for 14 years because he's the best. Hagen-Law.com. It's a mad world out there, but one thing is certain, everyone is trying to market something. So tune in every Saturday at 3 p.m. to the Marketing Mad Men, who, along with a variety of industry expert guests, can help you make sense of it all. Whether you own a business and want tips to scale, or are a fan of the finer things in life and want to know how restaurants, golf courses, and wine companies try to sell you stuff, the Marketing Mad Men is your ultimate destination for all things marketing. Tune in right here on Extra 106.3 every Saturday at 3 p.m. or search online for more content. Join the madness with the Marketing Mad Men. Hey, Atlanta golfers, did you know that one of the best courses in Georgia is located right here in Tucker. Heritage Golf Links is a beautiful mixture of modern and traditional link style play with incredible facilities and beautiful views designed around a 20 acre lake. And when you're done playing, have a drink at our full bar or a great meal while sitting on our lakeside patio overlooking the course. So come on out and have a great full Georgia day at Heritage Golf Links. Book your tea time online at heritagegolflinks.com or on our new app that is available now. Miss any of the show? No sweat. Grab your extra 106 63 app and listen to show replays whenever you want. Download the extra app now for Apple and Android by searching for XTRA 1063. How you doing? Look out. It's only me. It's only the camera with Pete Davis and Flounder 334. And you're on Letter Rip Friday. <laughs> Yeah. 
Da da da. Yeah, the Foo Fighters, baby. In 2011, the Foo Fighters released their seventh album, Wasting Light. It was preceded by the successful single, Rope. It became only the second song ever. Wow, this is pretty cool. Rope, Foo Fighters, only the second song ever to debut at number one on Billboard's Rock Songs chart. Wasting Light earned four Grammys, including Best Rock Album. Foo Fighters, I had no idea they were... I mean, I know of them, but I didn't know they were like monster... A huge guy. It's cool. Uh, I learn some every day here in the Old Kimmer program. Mostly because I don't know anything and I keep learning myself. <laughs> you know, you bastards are amazing. Every day I talk about music and you know, like his, you know, you know, every freaking album cut of every album ever done and where it was written and who wrote it and who was freaking playing the drums, for God's sakes. Well, if, sick, all of you. If we talk about Nelson Riddle Orchestra, <laughs> I'm sure you can weigh in. Well, with I mean, you know, the wayward win with Toby, uh, Tony, uh, Toby Grant. What's your name now? Yogi, Toby, Yogi, somebody Grant. Gogi Grant. The wayward win by Gogi Grant. I dare See, you. <laughs> there's your Beaumont with the... Tennessee Ernie Ford. 16 tons and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. <sighs> See? Now, see, chicks love that. I'll bet you there's... I'll bet you oh, there's, that in I'll bet you there's 80 or 100 babes out there right now saying, God, I wish I was there right now. I'd kiss that man in the mouth. <clears throat> Our birthday list includes Seorse Ronan. All right, I'm not well. Give me a break. <laughs> I've had a hard day. I didn't want to have to you go through... You have not I had, had a hard day. I, I had nine well, I other things happening at the same TV time, plus shopping. being bugged by the VA thing. I've, I'm telling you, it's a nightmare. Absolute nightmare. Going to the Best Buy. It's not Say. Best Buys, by the way. It's Best Buy. Well, whatever. Best yeah, and, and like I didn't want to spend $1,000. Guess how much I spent? Yeah, $1,000. Do you realize, <laughs> if you showed someone from 100 years ago... Yeah. The TV that you're getting today, <laughs> I know. they would never leave your house. I know, I know, I know. And you're sitting there complaining about I don't want, it. I didn't want it. Yeah, because I didn't want it. I was, I was doing fine until my TV broke. So you're saying I should be happy that my TV broke and I just went out and spent all my time and my money for something fine. I never should have wanted to do. No fine. one told you to go buy a $1,000 TV. <laughs> yeah. That's your fault. Oh, God. Uh, you know, you <laughs> it better follow you home. For a thousand dollars. Our birthday list. You better make me coffee in the morning. Cersei Ronan, thirty years old. She played Hannah. I loved that movie. That was a great, weird, great movie. Strange. Uh, she was also in the Lovely Bones, and she played Joe March in the 2019 Little Women remake. Her name is pronounced Sersha, like inertia. Well, I'm going to say Cersei instead of Sersha because I don't Saoirse. like it, and I don't like her anymore. It's either. Irish. I liked her when she, when she was in, uh, that teenage kid in Hannah. That was a really cool movie. Uh, let's see, and she's uh, 30, so there you go. All right, now I have my history list. I spent time on my history list. Uh, 1945 on this very day. The trip to Warm Springs, Georgia, was supposed to be for relaxation and good health. Now nah, it was the end for President FDR. Was he was he with his mistress? Yes. Wasn't he pounding his mistress and she freaking no, killed him? She right? was in the room. Yeah, she was, she was in, in the room, room holding a pillow over his mouth before he kept talking about it. And his... they ushered her out. Yeah, they said he's dying, so you gotta before go. Before Eleanor. Yeah. yeah. Because she's uh, the wife's gotta show up, so you wanna get the hell out of here and by the way, put that away. <laughs> <laughs> that was to him. Somebody throw a towel over me. <laughs> sorry. He said, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's doing he's no <laughs> lean it down, okay, please. <laughs> he's playing pump tent. A cardboard box. All right, that'll be fine. A little pup tent right, over there. Put a hat over there. Somebody bring a hat. Anybody <laughs> hey, got a derby? A Stetson something. <laughs> Fedora. <laughs> oh, now I've lost my a place. A dunce cap. <laughs> 1945, Robert Springs. Yeah, FDR. Dying of a massive cerebral hemorrhage at his well. retreat. And Vice President Harry Truman got the job and the bombs. Well, we can was, laugh about it now. Well, we're laughing now, sure. <laughs> You know, Nelson Rockefeller died in the saddle. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess on, on top of her, we I don't know either way. Okay, imagine a poor girl going, oh, I, I killed him. He's dead. <laughs> no, who are you going to call? You know, are you, you going to try to hide it? I mean, you know, <laughs> I mean, what are you supposed to do? Oh, Lordy. Mm. I hate when that happens. Uh, 339. Yeah, Kim Pete and Flounder. 404-741-1230. 741-1230. And now the Braves are in uh, Miami. Is yes, that sir. And uh, again, I assume it's a night game tonight. Yes, and, sir. And, okay, just uh, we have Holy Crap at Sports coming up. Also, Pete Davis will be talking about something very interesting for his life coming up soon. I don't want to spoil it. Just listen to you. Oh, well, I said it sports. earlier, by God. Well, not really. Okay. Not really. Also, now, Flounder and Pete, we got to figure this out. Sometime maybe in the next hour, I mentioned yesterday the the, the uh, commentary 
by Gordon Sinclair, who's a Canadian broadcaster called The Americans. I think it was called The Americans. <clears throat> and Flounder found it. It's really long. It's like five minutes, which is eternity in radio. But we, I, I don't know how we can maybe can we if we could play part of it and then go to the last like two minutes or something maybe I, I don't know if that's possible on on the computer system you have in there probably not yeah I mean I can just you need to let me know <clears throat> so you want the tail end of it well no I, I, we need to do I, I, it's five minutes is too long unless we dedicate let me see if just, I can find a good starting ending point so give me a we'll play it in the four o'clock hour unless you want to leave early and then we'll just well play. I mean yeah, man, I can tell you we could play it to end the show. <laughs> Well, again, I, I'm, I, again, I tease it, so I don't want people to think we're not going to play it. But again, I want to play it when people want to hear it, and if they don't, if they're not well, going to listen to that okay. for five minutes, five minutes. In, in the fi- how about this? In the five o'clock hour, we will play some sort of that. Right. Maybe, 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 maybe not five minutes, but we'll play. You some. know what? I'll the, tell you what. In the old days, you had to tease it and do it. Now you can just tell people where to go to listen to it. All right. Well, I'll tell yeah, you what. I can Flounder, post it on the podcast part. All right. Well, all right, we're going to do that for sure. But I'll tell you what. Just for kicks. Um, I want to talk. We got some more in OJ. I want to talk about the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, marriage that didn't uh, didn't work out. How, how unusual is that? Um, and then uh, just uh, uh, coming up a couple minutes. Let's play like the first minute of it. And just to tell them what, so that we can tell them what we're talking about, and then and then we'll figure out how to do uh, something on later on. Is that okay? How about that? Sounds like a plan. All right, let's do this. All right, we'll get into the OJ thing. We've kind of covered the latest again. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the hot tub story and uh, him having sex with Kardashian's wife. And now one of the angles is is that they all knew about it. And it w- they were like either if they weren't swapping, that there was not a big deal. I don't know. I have no idea. It was true. California, man. Yeah, Back in the whenever that was. Okay. Now you want to get upset for a second? Let's do this. Flounder, let's do the CNN thing. That lady was on CNN, if you don't mind. Uh, a contributor suggesting about the O.J. Simpson case that, <laughs> well, her name is Ashley Allison. And she says she thinks she knows why black people identify with O.J. Simpson and why they were so pleased that he got away with it. Uh, and here's a uh, just play here a little bit comment on CNN. But it was so racially charged because of what had happened uh, just before with Rodney King, but also just how black Americans feel about policing. It's not like O.J. Simpson was the, the leader of the civil rights movement of his era. You right. know, he wasn't a social justice leader. But he represented something for the black community in that moment, in that trial, particularly because there were two white people who had been killed. And the, the history around how black people have been persecuted um, during slavery, there were, there were just so many layers. And I guess I would just close with this, is that there was racial tension then, there is racial tension now. It might not be the backdrop of the Trump campaign, but until this country no. is ready to actually have an honest conversation about the racial dynamics from our origin story oh till today. God. We will always have moments. Oh, like okay, that's fine. So, yeah, that, that's what you know. In fact, uh, Pete and I kind of got in a, in a yelling thing when we heard that uh, earlier on the on the radio station, and we got to think. I am so sick and tired of this crap. That's all we talk about is race all what day. What does she mean? Have to have a conversation on the the issue? The, what, what are they? What They're is she never talking gonna about? Stop talking about she it. She she says uh, black people liked OJ because he killed white people. Yeah, that's what she says, and defended it. We need an honest conversation about racial dynamics. Oh my God, you poor babies! I mean, you've got the to be slavery kidding me. ended 130 years before the murder. Had zero to do with that. Now I can understand black people that had trouble back in the 60s and 70s, 80s and 90s, maybe leading up to that. But quit bringing slavery yeah. in like it has anything to do with the O.J. Simpson well, tobacco. In fact, we're gonna. In fact, we're gonna play the uh, soundbite in a minute here, Flounder, of the lady on uh, who, who was on, uh, met Donald Trump, the black woman who met Donald Trump here shortly. But first, uh, a couple of things reacting to this business just like this, and the way the, how the media covered the Donald Trump visit with the black people who loved him. Uh, local stations, Atlanta, ignoring the support blacks are showing, so you know what to do. Blacks for Trump. Uh, another, you live in the greatest country in the world because of those white men from the 1700s and 1800s. Yes, blacks were once slaves. They were never a slave, so stop acting like a slave. You're a freaking millionaire. White people and others died back then so you could be free, thanks to the Republican President Abraham Lincoln and his freaking army. Hey, wake up. White dudes are from the 1800s are without a doubt among the racist, cruel men who have ever 
existed. And no, they don't get to decide what happens in 2024. Oh, that's D.H. Hewley, the comedian. Yeah. Just to throw that in. Screw you, pal. Anyway, I mean, just one more, one after another after another. And now uh, that uh, that woman who uh, met, oh, so I got it. I, I put it out of order here now. Here we go. Uh, that very nice lady, the Conserve the Culture founder, uh, Michaela Montgomery, went viral when she hugged Donald Trump when he came to see the uh, to the restaurant. In fact, founder, do you have the visit with her, the sound of her at uh, Chick Fil A? Let's do that if we can. What the media tells you, Mr. Trump, Thanks. we support you. Uh, we support you. Okay, four p.m. We've been four p.m. Come here, let now. me give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Those are black people. And now this uh, the same lady, Michaela, was on, uh, was it uh, Fox this morning, I think, uh, Channel yeah, 5? Yeah, so she was on Friends. Fox and Friends, Fox and, and Friends. Uh, she was talking about how when you meet the president versus what the media puts out there in their narrative, and it was uh, pretty good. Here yeah. it is. The general consensus or social media would have you thinking that if President Trump were to show up to the HBCU campuses or walk around the ABC community, that like some angry mob would form or a riot would ensue and that he would not be welcomed. And clearly the sentiment in that room the other day was the complete opposite. He was very welcome. People were excited to see him. People showed up in support of him. And people, um, of course, were from all four institutions within the AUC. Um, the local HBCU community in Atlanta, and they all showed up in support of them. So it's actually kind of crazy to see people in an uproar when all four institutions were legitimately represented, and all four institutions were represented by said students who wanted to support President Trump. You know, McKenna. And I really appreciate that we were able to not only let him know that regardless of what social media says, you know, I know they're trying to make us think we're supposed to hate you, but we don't. And additionally, it was a learning experience for my students because they were able to see yeah. and experience firsthand how the media can warp the perception of an opinion or a person. Because uh, like I said, to think that these students who attend these illustrious institutions aren't smart enough to make their own decisions, That's so right. much so that they would only show support for Trump because he bought chicken sandwiches and milkshakes. It's offensive. That in itself is the most disturbing part of it all, especially when you think about the fact that it was mainly urban media outlets that were doing everything in their power to turn other black people against these young black kids. Who, and she finished the sentence was who uh, turned against these young black kids who simply were not shy to explore other options. This what a, what a great woman! Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, you know, just telling the the actual truth, and she was just creaming the local media who totally misled everybody about exactly what was going on. Leave here. on purpose. Leave the plantation. Unbelievable. Uh, Three forty seven. Kimber Pete and Flounder. We'll do a little bit of the uh, Gordon Sinclair American thing coming up for a second shortly. All right, don't let, wait. It's all right. It'll be fine. The legend, Neil Bortz, is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's Pete, and here's what you missed from the Talkmaster. We need more prisons. We need more jails. We need more swift, certain punishment. The biggest deterrent to crime out there is swift and certain punishment. That's why I want to see us really streamline uh, the capital punishment laws in this country to where we can convict a murderer, sentence him to death, give them a, a streamlined 45-day appeal process, and then fry them. Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 106.3 or listen anytime on the Extra 106.3 app. Atlanta's Mark from the Safe House. And now, the security riddle of the day. What's less secure than a fake safe from a furniture big box store? Joe Biden's fake border policy, of course. But hey, there is good news. This time next year, Joe Biden will not be president. So drop right Atlanta Safe House and check out the largest selection of safes in the Southeast. Build a wall around your valuables with a safe from the Safe House. We have certified delivery crews to install your safe. With over 30 years in the safe business, the Safe House is the place to buy safe in Georgia. So go to atlantasafehouse.com.
Central Heating and Air Conditioning wants you to know the start of the new season is the perfect time to ensure your home's comfort. Don't wait like most people do to have your HVAC system serviced. Your home should have maintenance twice a year. Maintenance helps keep your system running at peak efficiency and extends the life of your equipment. So turn to Atlanta's carrier experts for your system's maintenance. With Central, you get carrier products, carrier warranty, and carrier peace of mind. It's allergy season and Central Heating and Air can fix what ails your house and possibly your family with home ventilation and air quality products. Central has packages designed around health using variable speed, fresh air ventilation, air cleaners, air purifiers, dehumidifiers, and more. Central Heating and Air is one of the few second-generation, locally owned and operated HVAC companies in Atlanta. With Central, you're not just a number, you're a member of the family. It's been that way since 1947, and they've serviced over 100,000 customers right here in Atlanta. Call 770-GET-HEAT or go to centralheat.com. We're smart, we care. We're Central Heating and Prep on Cobb Parkway is your one-stop shop for emergency preparedness supplies, including freeze-dried food, water filtration, first aid, and more. They also have a large selection of firearms, including a huge selection of AR-15s, firearm accessories, and ammo at the lowest prices around. They are locally owned and operated. You can visit their store in Marietta on Cobb Parkway or online at trueprep.com. That's T-R-U prep.com. Prepare today for a worry-free tomorrow at True Prep. So, Robert, I want to thank you for your time. I just don't think you're the right person for this position. I don't understand. Was it something I said? Well, we did a background check on you and found some things of concern. If you're in charge of hiring for your company, you know how helpful a background screening can be. That's why companies that use Horizon Background Screening make smarter hiring decisions. Don't let the wrong hire put your company at risk. Get the real story on your candidates at horizonscreening.com. Horizonscreening.com. Election coverage is more than polls and numbers. It's about what matters in your life and your community. And Atlanta's only conservative news and talk station cares about your community, your voice, and most importantly, your vote. So keep it all here for the latest and download the Extra 106.3 app and keep up with Atlanta's only conservative voice. <laughs> oh my, that was he said a bad word there on the radio. Well, there's word. a reason I played this yes, song. Yes, apparently, because as we speak, it's Flounder's our musical director. Uh, Kimmer Pete and Flounder, 2010 on this day, the Vatican's official newspaper, La Gita Tuatati, il Romano La Tatarino, published, I might have added a syllable or two, uh, published a story praising the Beatles and saying it forgave John Lennon, this is in 2010, forgave John Lennon for his 1966 comment that the group was bigger than Jesus. Lennon told a British newspaper in 1966 at the height of Beatlemania that he did not know which would die out first, Christianity or rock and roll. And so they said, well, we forgive you. Well, that was nice of you after f f uh, 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Off a white album. Yeah. Oh, mercy. And uh, let's see, our birthday list includes uh, Claire Danes, 45 years old. She was Carrie Matheson on Homeland, but she was the, wasn't she was one of those early shows of this thing about young kids and what they're going through as adolescents, uh, like Party of Five, but it, was, it wasn't that one, whatever the other one was that she was in. But she was one of the early uh, teen actresses who was a very good actress. And it was not like, you know, a busting beauty known, you know, as a, a, a beach a bikini girl. So she was just there for her acting ability. And, of course, the Homeland was one of the great series, I think. On this day in history, uh, what was, well, I forgot what I was going to do. Well, I'll just pick one here. Um, oh, in 1999, uh, President Pervert Rapey Democrat God Bill Clinton is found in contempt of court by a girl judge, Susan Weber Wright for giving false testimony in the Paula Jones lawsuit when he was asked about Monica Lewinsky. Being a Democrat, though, no problem. Stayed in office. Now he's a big hero. Bill Clinton going everywhere with all the top Democrat leaders. God, you're just so proud to see him and be with him and knowing what kind of a guy's been. It's all oh, just a... Mm, mm, mm. Uh, and, and, you know, I think probably the strongest part for me that, that what people admire about him is, is, that, is that wonderful marriage, that, that loving, happy marriage he's had for so long with Hillary Rodham, Pea Stinky, Fart Cabbage. And, and it just, you know, fun to remind Reminds me of, 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 of a topic that's coming up in the news on that very topic here the, today with the Kimber Pete and Flounder show. The marriage that was made in heaven. Yes, it was it was made right here. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, that's right, all right. Ah, uh, good grief. The Golden Bachelor and his wife are kaput. Uh, three months, uh, they never actually even lived together. <laughs> they were in separate homes in separate states, ladies and gentlemen. This was the Golden Bachelor. It's a joke. This <laughs> My is a guy. Gary is 72, Teresa's 70. If you, if we talked about it at length, and again, the whole thing made me sick. I mean, I, I, not only because of me being, you know, an old bachelor. I mean, I, I'm that guy. I mean, I'm even older, but but still, I'm that I'm that thing, and I can't imagine. I mean, they, they, anyway, uh, I was just, I was appalled by the whole business and trying to act like they're young and sexy and a, a guy who just, you know, please. Um, anyway. Jealous butt? No, well, yeah, I was. I, I'd like to be in love. I, I want, I, I, my whole plan was to be, have, be the best part of my life. I had it all figured out. It was all done. Rick the Painter wants to weigh in. Well, by God, let's get Rick the Painter on the phone because we got a Flounder's Funny coming up here in a second. Rick the Painter, you're on the radio, my friend, and then uh, Flounder's Funny's for Nucky's Hoagie standing by. Hello, Rick, you're up. What's up, man? Hey, Kim, good afternoon, brother. Hey, um, just a couple of things. For one, um, you know, I, I listen to you play your harmonica. You do the... Uh, uh, I just want to give you a little pointer. You got... The way you're playing, you're doing it. You're actually almost playing a song. You're, about, you're playing a Billy Joel song. You're doing this, and I'm going to just kind of slip. You uh, want... Okay, well, you blow it out. Blow it in, blow it out, blow it out. Okay, all right. Now, now, if you slow it down and you go like yeah, this, same yeah, area, you go... Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's close. <laughs> Sounds just like him. It's like you're in the room with Billy Joel. You're almost there. You're almost there. Kevin. Cool. Hey, it's anyway, a dueling just practice harmonicas. Practice it, by, practice it by, by yourself at home or whatever. But anyway, I also want to comment on Costco. You were yeah. talking about the caskets at Costco? Yeah. I was there. And sure enough, the guy tried to sell me a casket, and I told him that's the last thing I need. The last thing I need, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Ho, Rick the painter. Ho, hey. In fact, we have a story from Costco about a guy who just returned a television set that's 22 years old, <laughs> and they took it back. <laughs> <laughs> he says, that doesn't fit anymore. <laughs> Ow, go. What would we forget, Flounder? What's when I was single, I had one pillow, and that's what I thought life was, you know. <laughs> I had one pillow. I never thought about multiple pillows because I only have one head. So I've always had a one head to pillow policy in my life. I thought I'm gonna get married. My wife's gonna bring in a pillow. And yeah, good luck. We'll be a two pillow household, <laughs> just like I've always dreamed of. Just like my father dreamed of. Just like his father before him. Just like my son will someday dream of. And boy, was I wrong. 14 pillows. That's what we have in our bed. looks like Stonehenge right now. <laughs> looks like a beaver went to Ikea. Right? <laughs> building a dam of wasted money. <laughs> Takes an hour and a half to make the bed. By the time you're done making it, you have to unmake it to take it out. <laughs> is that Pergazzi? That is Mason James right there. Oh, it sounds like Nate Pergazzi. Yeah. Nope, Mason James. Oh wow. my God, that's the same. St that's really good. Co that kind of family uh, wife style. I love humor. that stuff. That I'll was be better damned. than Bargatze. Uh, that was gr that was very yeah, clever. Not the attitude. Well, Flounder, there. Uh, I've got. Yep, I started following them on social media. Yesterday. Excellent. And we'll just use all their. I mean, anytime you can, then just boom, bam, wow, outstanding. One point I want to make about the slavery thing. Yeah. yeah. No other country in the world, within 100 years of its founding, fought a civil war that killed half a million people to stop slavery. No other country right. did Let's that. Think about that. To stop within 100 years of its founding ended slavery. And by, Everybody else kept it for hundreds or thousands of years. And in the 1620s, uh, the Massachusetts Bay Colony, one of the colonies became the first to outlaw slavery uh, in the 1600s. Yeah. So the 1619 project didn't include the, like the 1626 project. That, uh, slavery still exists. Yeah. Well, yeah. In Africa. The world. China. Yeah. <laughs> China. Yeah. Africa. Middle East. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Unbelievable. You know what kills me? All these people running their mouth about slavery. That was a hundred and some years. There's nothing you can do about that now. You know what right. you can? Try and stop what's going on now 
in other parts of the world. Well, uh, yeah, well, uh, uh, let's talk about. Yeah, let's. T- <laughs> How about we start with America, with maybe having families that raise kids who don't become uh, criminals when they're 13 years old, trying to prove they belong in a gang. Families, it's uh, one mother. Yeah, exactly. Uh, in fact, I think the latest figure I just heard uh, yesterday was that something like 70 something percent of the black babies born in America today are born to oh, single mothers. It's it's well, all of them are born to single. Yeah. Well, I mean, one well, no father. <laughs> I know yeah, from, where, where are the fathers? Yeah. Uh, how about quit uh, popping kids out with your baby mama and then leaving? Yeah. And that, la- in fact, that woman uh, who's trying to get money because of what her kid did and then uh, the headlines from yesterday. Dexter. And wait to hear about what happened in Memphis. We've got that story for you coming up. You're going to hear a police chief tell you what happened. And when you hear the background of the teenage punk who just killed a cop, I'm going to ask you why anybody would still vote for a Democrat. And why would you be a police officer without being able to do a routine traffic stop by first shooting out the back window to see if anything bad's going on in there? That's my goal. The police ought to be able to come up to you and say, first, I'm going to shoot out your window to see if you're doing anything bad. That might be a little aggressive. I don't know. As I'll be think about it tomorrow. I mean, we'll t- come, coming up at 4 o'clock. Four o'clock. <laughs> I mean, really, I think we should do that. <laughs> Denied. WFOM and W292EV Marietta, a Dickie Broadcasting Station. This hour is presented by Atlanta Safe House. President Biden's message to Iran. I'm Lisa Brady, Fox News. It's one word don't amid reports that Iran is preparing to attack Israel soon. Tehran has said Israel will pay for a deadly strike on Iran's consulate in Syria this month. Answering shouted questions from reporters, the president says his expectation for an attack from Iran is sooner rather than later. Israel says it will respond to an Iranian attack. President Biden says the U.S.-Israeli defense link is ironclad. He had more to say about that today. We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We will support Israel. We will defend, help defend Israel. And Iran will not succeed. The Pentagon moving more assets in the region just in case. Fox's Greg Palcott, the head of U.S. Central Command, has been in Israel meeting with defense officials. The State Department telling U.S. embassy staffers and families not to travel around Israel until further notice. Wall Street on edge. The Dow down 475 points at the bell that's actually off the session lows. A U.S. assessment finds China is aiding Russia's war in Ukraine by surging sales of technology to Russia, which uses that technology to produce missiles, tanks, aircraft, and other weapons. To senior Biden administration officials telling the Associated Press about 90% of Russia's microelectronics came from China last year, along with nearly 70% of its machine tool imports just in the fourth quarter. President and Biden has raised concerns with China's president about indirect support for Russia's war effort. Another ro- another round of student loan relief. The president announcing $7.4 billion in student loan forgiveness. Now, this is changes to current plans that have already taken place here. Fox Business' is Edward Lawrence at the White House. The president also wants to extend relief to some 30 million Americans under his SAVE plan, which several Republican-led states are challenging. America is listening to Fox News. Hey, it's Jesse Kelly. Are you still on the fence about owning gold? It's time to pull the trigger with the Oxford Gold Group and buy gold and silver. Nobody can predict the future, but we can't put our head in the sand either. The Oxford Gold Group are the pros. They make owning gold and silver simple and easy to understand. Call Oxford Gold Group right now and you may qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. Call 833-995-GOLD. That's 833-995-GOLD. Hear that? The relaxing sound of ambient music in a yoga class. And if you were here, you'd listen to 15 people taking a deep breath in sync. But you're not here. Because your self-care happens out on the road, riding your motorcycle protected by Progressive. So if you ride, get a quote today and see if you could save with Progressive, America's number one motorcycle insurer, and find inner peace with a different pose called Palms on Handlebars. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates not available in all states. Rough, rough. (laughs) <laughs> Look out. 
It's Let It Rip Friday. Anything goes, just like every other day. I was like, oh, and at 403, it's only me. It's only the Kimmer with Pete Davis and Philander at the controls. And this is Metallica. On 2000, on this day, 2000, Metallica filed a lawsuit against Napster and Yale University, the University of Southern California, and Indiana University for infringing on their copyright. I don't know why in the world they would complain about colleges and that. I think this was the more. start of uh, downloading music. Ah, uh, the Napster they, they were, thing. They were, like, I mean, I, I used it all the time, but you were downloading music for free. Yeah. Well, in fact, part of the in the social network, one of the big things was that the guy who founded Napster being part of the of the new uh, committee there thing. There, I used to have three thousand. Uh, I'll bet. Songs yeah, I remember people were saying on my phone, and then Apple said, "No, unless you bought it from us at iTunes, you can no longer have it on your phone." Oh, no, so. upsy, upsy. Um, our uh, birthday list includes uh, I don't there. Shannon Doherty, fifty three years old. Uh, Prue Hallowell on Charmed. Yes. I never, I, did, I didn't like. I liked the one with the uh, chin dip, the little chubby one. Oh, uh, they're uh, all Mary good. Rosie or what's her name? Uh, 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 she something hadn't asked Marie. Me. She had three oh, names. Uh, she had three Ashley names. Marie or something. What the hell? The Ro- uh, oh crap! Yes. I wish I, if I had said the name, I would have had it. Yeah. Crap. Oh, it, God, I almost had it. Uh, we'll think of it later. She Keep has a little chin thing. Um, uh, Shannon Doherty, 53. Uh, Prue Hallowell on Charmed. Brenda Walsh on 90210. Yep. And a badass cancer survivor in real yeah. life. She's still yeah, she's kicking. Still, yeah. Yeah, that's right. And she, uh, it was like a year ago when when they thought it was a ball game. I remember her coming out saying, this is not looking good, and thank you, and, you know, adios kind of deal. So Holly Marie Combs. Bingo. There you go. I like her. Yeah. There's something about her. Well, she's just, she's you know, she's... Cute. She's cute, and you want to squeeze her. She just. She's got a. She has a look about her that she's just. She, I, it's not really sex appeal, but it's appeal. It's. it's you want to go. You want to be with her and, and hug her and kiss her and just be with her. Take her home to meet your mama. That's then right. take her home. That's right. And she's. Uh, she's very. Uh, take her attractive. to the hot tub. Yeah. Uh, on this day, <gasps> what's the matter? The world's oldest conjoined twins have died. Oh. Now, now, did one of them die and the other one just say, okay, fine? Well, God, now what? Now, how did that? Well, let's find out. Let me do this and then okay. figure out more about because, oh, my God, that's got to be horrible. <sighs> oh, now, my was, God. The twi- uh, hold on, hold on, hold the hold on. Oh, come. Uh, well, no, screw this. You, let's do your story. Uh, tell me what, what do you got. What, what happened? What's uh, up? Lori and, and George Chappelle. Uh, so it's a boy and a girl. They were joined oh, at the head, the top of the head. Oh, God. Their skulls had fused together. They passed away in Pennsylvania. A doctor said, you won't live past 30. They lived to 62. They died at the hospital. And uh, this Shared is... Shared a brain? Yeah. I don't oh, know how they God. went through life like that. I so, really they, don't. so they could stand up together. So it was their foreheads were touched together. Yes, yeah, so it's hard, very hard to walk so they could, facing each other. And, and the picture shows them fully dressed, standing up together with their foreheads tapped together. It says, oh, you went up to your friend and you touched foreheads, and that's the way you lived 60-something years. Wow. Now, did the brain, is it one brain died for both of them? Yeah, they say there's two people, so it's two brains. Well, then did both of them die at the same time? That's what I was saying. Did just one go and the other one? Oh wait a minute! Oh wait a minute here. One of them false was, headline. One of them was transgender. One became George. Oh no! Our Can you imagine? You have your sister. Your oh, twin so you sister. said one was a boy, one was a girl. They're both. They're both. So girls. they're both girls, but one pretended to be a boy. And oh my decided. God! Even the Siamese twins can draw a, a, a tranny and the twin. Oh God! It's everywhere. How how did somebody convince that person to be a tranny? She had spina bifida. That was in a wheelchair. They had to be pushed around. She oh was a, my She was God. a country singer and a trophy-winning ten-pin bowler. Well, I'd, I, all right. Worked at a hospital, and she would work around her sister's gigs. They toured the world. Good Lord, God what bless them. You know, I'm mean, God bless them. I can't believe it. They lived in. Inde- oh wait a minute. Says they lived independently in a two bedroom apartment. Well, not completely independently. They were Obviously. always with. Them. What if one had to go to the bed? You know what I mean. Oh, yeah, they yeah. took turns practicing separate hobbies. They alternated which room they would sleep in. They used a shower curtain as a barrier. As one stood outside. I guess they'd have to after one became a guy. Oh, for God's sakes! That's. <laughs> I mean, that's ridiculous. Oh, now, now I'm going to give you privacy after we were born together, and all of a sudden I don't want to look at you now? Said they never wanted to be uh, split. They had a chance, and they said no, because it probably would have killed them. I, I'm, if you look at the photo, I don't I know how it's I would have taken the chance. I, I can't imagine living head-to-head to, head to somebody for 70 years almost. Wow. And there, this is where? Do we know where this Pennsylvania. Was? 
And they just they just recently died. And again, just in the news, uh, there was a soldier. I think it was an army, uh, or maybe it's a nurse, uh, somebody in uniform. I think it was it might have been a military guy, married uh, a Siamese twin girls. Yeah, and they're conjoined. I think at the hip, so they have separate or the shoulder. I guess shoulder. But they, they have separate heads. I mean, they have separate necks and heads, and separate. I guess they <laughs> have the one separate or one one thing together. Right? One, well, two, it, two. It, it's like the old movie with Rosie Greer, and at the end of his career, Gig Young, yeah. or somebody else. It was an old actor. Uh, hor- they shoot horses, don't they? Gig no, Young. It, it was called the Man with Two Heads. It was yeah. science fiction, and the, Rosie Greer was big enough to have another guy in the same suit with him, pretending yeah. to have a head next to him. Wow. Anyway, but the, the, these two girls, Siamese twins, just got married. And you have to want all kinds of questions about, you know, sharing the, uh, you know, the sensitivity of various things. Mm-hmm. And one says yes, one says no. One will do something, one won't. I mean, of my God. Of course you would turn it and you're sexual. Have to, well, well, that's the first thing you think uh, of. Who? Isn't that the first thing you would think, think of if all of a sudden you're no. going to be with two women on this date? Guess what? Are you going to kiss them both goodnight or, you know, geez. Let's make this G-rated again. Who was the actor in Lost Weekend? Won an Oscar. Oh, our, Ray Meland. Ray, Ray, it was Ray Meland at the end of his career with Rosie. Ah, there you go. Now, see how I knew that? It's sad. Aren't Luke. you glad? I, that popped right out, I know. Too. Very good. So you know this. You're good for So I haven't lost it all. From pre-1955. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have those anymore, I'm afraid. When your brain was fresh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 409. God. Uh, all right. What we're going to do, I can't. Oh, I, I know what we want to do. Um, so well, we should talk what, about so, the Memphis thing, because that's the lead story on okay. Fox. And right, let's do this. Yeah. I, let's do this. Um, Okay, Memphis, Tennessee, the police were responding to a report of a suspicious vehicle this morning. Okay, the, uh, let's see, the shooting unfolded. Officers responded to a suspicious call two o'clock in the morning. The occupants, of, okay, cops pull over, go up to the vehicle, two people inside the vehicle, one, at least one started shooting at the police. The cops show up and they get shot at and shot. They got shot at, and they get shot. The police return fire. The suspects drive away. The vehicle gets stopped. One suspect immediately apprehended. The other taken into custody after fleeing the scene. Both taken to a hospital with critical condition with gunshot wounds. But one of the police officers died. Joseph McKinney uh, died. The killer is 18. His companion gun buddy is 17. Now... Uh, here's the rest of the story. Wait until you hear from the police chief as we're about to play for you right now. Police, the interim police chief, uh, Carolyn Davis. She is going to tell you the story of the background and what happened with this teenage cop killer this morning. A total of three officers were struck by gunfire. Tragically, one of our officers lost his life. That officer is Joseph McKinney. One suspect was 18 years old and the other suspect is 17 years old. The 18 year old suspect was arrested in March 2024 by MPD in a stolen vehicle with an illegal modified semi-automatic weapon with a Glock switch attached. The Glock switch converted the weapon to a fully automatic machine gun. He was also charged at that time for two stolen vehicles and having a programming device commonly used to steal cars. The suspect was released at that time without bond. Uh, Let's review that again. Last month, Mm -hmm. the cop killer was pulled over, arrested for being in a stolen car, having stolen uh, burglary tools, uh, car theft uh, uh, tools, and a machine gun. Um, They let him go. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, cop pulls him over, stolen car. That alone, isn't that handcuffs to go to jail? Okay, so the stolen car, and then, oh, uh, golly, kid, uh, you're 18, and you have a machine gun. Let me get, uh, you have a machine gun in your stolen car, and they take you to the courthouse, and they arrest you and book you and fingerprint you and let you go. Three words, George Soros D.A. That's exactly what it is. Memphis, Tennessee is overrun with crime because it's a liberal Democrat city. Democrat P, uh, DAs. In fact, the, uh, the Memphis DA is now trying to deny that he's in, in bed with George Soros. But guess what? Uh, he is getting money from the PAC that's funded by George Soros. Exactly. 
And these are Democrats. Why can you vote for these people? They let him out. They let him out a month ago. And this kid showed his appreciation so much for letting being let go and giving another chance that he murdered a cop because he got pulled over in a stolen car. Well, I don't even, I don't know if this one was, it doesn't even say what, what their suspicious activity was. It was this a car pulled over, and so the cops went up to him, and he got murdered. And the other cop got shot. Critical condition. I, my God, I, I mean, this is unbelievable. Now, thank God they killed the scumbag. I got no sympathy. I don't care how old you are if oh. you're doing this. I'm sorry. I got no sympathy this anymore. It's unbelievable. I mean, seriously, I, 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 just, I can't. How could a judge? That judge ought to be in prison for like 40 yep. years. And the prosecutor, the same thing. And anybody who supported this no bail, cashless bail business, all of them go to prison. How can you vote for these people? How can you put our police officers in a situation like that where he just wanted to go to find out what the hell was going on and see if anything was wrong with that car or somebody inside? Maybe they this thing, the guy was having a heart attack and wanted to help him. God almighty. And he's dead forever. Freaking teenagers and liberals. <sighs> Welcome to America. 414, Kimber Payton Flounder. Leg out. It's time for the Bortz Report. Exclusively on Atlanta's only conservative news and talk station. Extra 106.3. One columnist during the last week opined that many Americans are afraid of freedom. Well, duh. I've been saying that for 40 years. It's reflected in the close polling between Democrats and Republicans. So I see the future as Democrat, and that is because people really are afraid to be free. Witness Social Security, a forced retirement program with less than a 1% return. So what is your future going to be like? with Democrats. Oh my, how those that shirk responsibility are loving Biden for his attempts to get rid of student loan debt. With Democrats in full control, look for a movement to forgive credit card debt. Of course, for people under a certain income threshold. This is a certainty. Look for an end to private education for your children. Governments must maintain control of the education of the people in order to make concepts like Social Security immune to attack. Somewhere on that Democrat wish list, government wage controls. We already have the government in California setting $20 minimum wages. Look for that nationwide. Not just minimum, but almost all wages. Rent control, housing cost control, that's on the list too. Landlords will not be able to maintain their properties. Nobody will be willing to build new rental properties because the money just isn't there. But that won't matter to the people because the rent will be low. Scarce, but low. I'm sure somewhere along the line there will be penalties if you intentionally misgender somebody. You know, in Canada, you can go to jail for that. It'll eventually come down to the point that the government will monitor the thermostat in your home. Make sure you're not too cool in the summer, not too warm in the winter. Climate change, after all. What fun. Let's look forward to it. Neil Bortz. Extra 106.3. Hey, homeowners, Tug here with some exciting news. Southern Exteriors is your one-stop solution for top-notch exterior services, from roofing to siding, windows, gutters, and more. No more waiting. They can start on your project immediately. And with an in-house warranty division, Southern Exteriors stands by their work for years to come. From leaky roofs to faded siding, trust Southern Exteriors for a quick and lasting transformation. Don't wait. Transform your home today. Call 877-9-SOUTHERN or visit southernexteriors.co now. Southern Exteriors, quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years. Millions of guys suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's one in four men. And I can tell you, I'm one of them. If you or someone you know suffer from ED, Peroni's disease, or PE, here's 38-year emergency room doctor and founder of Total Body Therapy of Georgia, Dr. Eric Deal. Patients who enter my office are often frustrated, hopeless, depressed, and embarrassed. I understand the problem, and I'm going to help you fix it. There are lots of competitors that don't have the credentials that I have. When you go to other clinics, you're not going to see board-certified physicians 
connection with the experience that I have. When you come to our clinic, you're going to see me. There's just not one therapy that can solve these complex issues. I'll do a complete history and physical prior to any treatment that we use. Take it from me, Dr. Deal. When it's not hard, it's really hard. Call Dr. Deal for your free one-on-one evaluation and resolve your ED, bronies, or PE issues. Total Body Therapy of Georgia, 404-777-1911. 404-777-1911. Online at StopMyED.com. Hey, homeowners, Tug here with some exciting news. Southern Exteriors is your one-stop solution for top-notch exterior services, from roofing to siding, windows, gutters, and more. No more waiting. They can start on your project immediately. And with an in-house warranty division, Southern Exteriors stands by their work for years to come. From leaky roofs to faded siding, trust Southern Exteriors for a quick and lasting transformation. Don't wait. Transform your home today. Call 877-9-SOUTHERN or visit southernexteriors.co now. Southern Exteriors, quality and precision you can rely on for over 20 years. Dun, 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 dun. Is this this girl, Ashley, we just played? Is that, yep, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, update for you here, folks. But first, David, the late David Cassidy. Bum, bum, bum. I always, I like this song. I like the stuff he did. Believe it or not, I did. I'm sorry. It's kind of bubble. It's like that bubblegum rock, and I did. I did enjoy it. Ding, 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 ding. I think I love you. Bum bum bum, love you. And I also, looked, I used to think about his little sister there on the show, on the TV show, Susan Day. Susan Day with that little love dimple. Yeah, yeah. like that Holly Marie Combs got that little love dimple, that little chin thing going there. Yeah, yeah. You had a little uh, thing with a little chin dimple there, yeah, a little honey in uh, one time there. Yeah. <laughs> 420, look out. <laughs> David Cassidy on this day in 1989. I like this song. I've got your love. I love what they do show me for. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's okay. move on. <laughs> Uh, this day, 1989, two DJs on L.A. station KOLS asked whatever happened to David Cassidy. Well, he called him. <laughs> and he said, come on up onto the show. So he did. And he played three songs live on the air. It was subsequently signed by a new record label. What? In 1989. <laughs> and whatever happened to David Cassidy. Where the hell's my fist away? There it is. Uh, and so they figured it out. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. God, allergies just trying to kill me. Our, our birthday list, uh, Kimber, Pete, and Flounder. Our birthday list includes Amy Ray, one half of the Indigo Girls, mm-hmm. 60 years old. And again, I thank the, uh, the Indigo Girls. One time gave some stuff for my daughter Jennifer when she was a big fan of theirs, and I appreciate them, and they were real sweet and local girls. And, and I Yeah, one of them was always. actually just on uh, Tug's uh, podcast, Bray's Country Podcast, which is on the really? podcast park. I think It hasn't been released yet, but it should be a pretty good one. No kidding. I think it is Amy. Amy, Ray, oh no, kidding! Really outstanding. Well, they were, they were, they were. If anybody knows them, tell them. The camera said they, they were just real sweet, and I remember. I forgot what the, what it was, but they were. Uh, anyway, they were very nice, and I appreciated what they had done. Uh, let's see. This date, two thousand nine, like the movie with Tom Hanks, is the rescue of Captain Richard Phillips. He was held captive by three pirates on a lifeboat, under tow by the USS Bainbridge. 30 yards from some Navy SEAL sharpshooters. And I recall in the movie, I think it was actually a true story, they had they were towing and they kept pulling in little by little. So the sharpshooters, the Navy SEALs, got a little bit closer, a little bit closer, better angles, and then bang, it was over. And the, and the bad guys didn't know that they were getting closer and closer because it was rough seas and everything. But little by little, they got close enough to get exactly what they needed and killed them. Killed the uh, three pirates, as they should have. Yeah, I don't know. Have been a lot, we haven't heard a lot about piracy on the high seas anymore, well, have we? They, they've kind of figured out if they put machine guns on the actual yeah. boats. And that's a, what a great job that would be, yeah. to run the machine gunner and shoot those little boats as they're coming up. Well, like, like, on, like on helicopters, you know, if, as long as you're far enough away, because that's a uh, way sit on your helmet. <laughs> anyway, 422, 422, Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder. Uh, our 4 o'clock hour brought to you by Atlanta Safe House, home of the Kimmer Safes. You need a safe, you just don't know it. Learn more. Put your social security card in there. Learn more at atlantasafehouse.com. And they have a showroom in Ackworth, by the way. All right, we're going to play a little bit in a minute here. We're going to play a little bit, just a little bit to tease you of the Americans from Gordon Sinclair. First of all, this this was amazing to me. And, and uh, again, I don't have... i got to get my phone open here. I do not... Oh, oh first of all, I'm sorry. Uh, a flounder sent us an update. 
the uh, the the uh, a woman we just played a minute ago who says that uh, black people like O.J. Simpson uh, because he killed white people, and she says we need to do something about race in this country because we're tired of the slavery in the beginnings of, and we're just you know God here we go again race 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 that's all they have that's uh, it's just unbelievable, and now uh, Flounder found this an update on uh, X I guess it is or someplace the CNN contributor responsible for those obscene remarks. Um, I'm gonna get my. Uh, a thing here and opens up a little bit here. Uh, CEO of Turner Bra uh, Connolly Group, uh, commentator Harvard so and so. Um, oh, she's a former uh, Joe Biden campaign transition person and worked for Obama. And apparently, her obscene remarks have been blocked. Uh, she suggested black people like OJ because he killed white people. Uh, there were two white people killed, and now they apparently have taken her off. Uh, I guess blocked her remarks, but I'm sure she'll still be on CNN. I mean, like always, these freaking people. Uh, anyway, now, the, one of the other things that bothered me today was uh, something, and I know, Pete, you watch the uh, Reacher show on, is it Netflix or whatever, what the, uh, the, the Reacher TV show? Netflix? It's Amazon. Amazon, okay. Now, uh, the movies, uh, Jack Reacher movies, I love. I mean, I've liked them all. Um, but the... Uh, even when, even when, uh, what's it, the little guy, uh, the, the big Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise uh, was a reacher because a reacher was supposed to be 6'5 and 260. So, anyway, all right, now here's what happened. All of a sudden, this guy, I've never seen the reacher TV show from Amazon. It's good. I, yeah. uh, I will now because I'm being dragged into the future. All right, his name is Alan Richson, actor Alan Richson, stars in Reacher. Here's what's happened now. Uh, quote from X, I just I saw this this morning, just kind of goofing around. He must not understand why people like the show. It's about good over evil, it's about right beating wrong apparently uh what he said was uh prime op uh, pick up the third of uh, the uh, prime video is not picking up the third season of reacher because of low viewership and uh this guy said okay that's complete horse crap it's one of their biggest things on there and it's already been green lighted what are they talking about well here, here, this may be the actual reason uh, the the story is that this guy richson apparently said he doesn't understand why people support President Trump. He calls Donald Trump a racist. He calls him a rapist and a con man. Uh, this guy says he hasn't taken two seconds to see Trump never been convicted of raping anybody or employed people for decades, something con men don't do. Another, I love the show. I see it's being dropped. He should have kept his mouth shut. They said it was canceled by low viewership. That's BS. Prime had it trending in the top ten for weeks. Uh, another, I can explain this in one word. The actor. Uh, let's see. He said, rapist. I like the show, too. Being an up-and-coming actor, I feel he had to spit out some Kool-Aid to get future jobs. It's uh, like someone famous or not is going to spout off. They should have done the homework. Uh, breaking news, Prime Mac Mac's not to pick him up. I guess he doesn't want to lose his contracts and future in an industry controlled by lefties. Just another royal-filled actor chasing fame. And apparently he called Donald Trump a rapist, and he says, you people who support him in some kind of a cult? Oh, it's worse. He calls uh, some evangelical Christians repulsive because they don't agree with him. And, he, boy, he's just got a new movie coming doing? out with Henry Cavill. What, he's, it's suicide. It's career suicide. I mean, he has the right to say it, and I, and I yeah. support I, I, In fact, I'm, I'm glad, glad he said it. I'm very glad he said it because I know not, I'm never going to see his movies. Screw him. But why in the world would you do that? He must know that, you know, <laughs> there goes at least half his audience, and probably other people are just fed up, fed up of hearing about it. But what's wrong with this guy? I mean, I, I support him. I'm happy, I'm, you know, but again, thank God for freedom of the press. He's right, an I'm, actor. I know. He, the, 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 why would you listen to an actor? Crazy. Uh, the smarter people write their words for them. Uh, yeah. It's somebody else's language. Yeah. Yeah, you can. You can. Their one talent is memorizing, yeah. and they don't do a You're good a job parent. at that. Reading the cue card yeah. and emoting on a stage or in front yeah. of a camera. Not everybody can do that. It's no, a talent. That's right. But mm, yeah. they're not very it's well not, educated. Yeah, yeah. And normally, uh, you have a director say, "No, I don't want it that way. I want it some different way." So, in other words, you're basically a parrot. You're someone. You're a vessel where people are filling you a with puppet. information and telling you how to use it. A marionette. You're exactly a, a vessel. Yeah, you're a puppet. A muppet. Uh, Four twenty-seven. Okay, let's do this, Father. If you don't mind, we. I'm 
mentioned that uh, the other day. Uh, we got sick, we're sick and tired of America getting bashed and what uh, things used to be, stuff like that. And uh, uh, back in, I, in fact, I should have looked up the date. Founder may even have it in there. I don't know. It had to be early '60s, I'm, if I had to guess, mid '60s, maybe. Um, the the story was that America. There was another disaster around the world, and America was uh, doing uh, putting stuff overseas and sending all this money. And at the same time, we were getting blasted because of some scandal. I've, in fact, that's there was a, a major scandal going on in America. I don't know whether it was the uh, Nixon thing. It might have been the Nixon impeachment stuff. Anyway, uh, Gordon Sinclair was a broadcaster commentator in Canada. And he, uh, we're not going to play the whole thing, but just we'll play the whole thing a little bit later on here today. But just to g- give you an idea of what it was, he was a broadcaster saying he's sick and tired of people bashing America because you don't know how good that country has it. Founder, if you would, just a little bit of the beginning. The United States dollar took another pounding on German, French, and British exchanges this morning, hitting the lowest point ever known in West Germany. It has declined there by 41% since 1971, and this Canadian thinks it's time to speak up for the Americans as the most generous and possibly the least appreciated people in all the world. As long as 60 years ago, when I first started to read newspapers, I read of floods on the Yellow River and the Yangtze, or who rushed in with men and money to help. The Americans did, that's who. They have helped control floods on the Nile, the Amazon, the Ganges, and the Niger. Today, the rich bottom land of the Mississippi is underwater, and no foreign land has sent a dollar to help. Germany, Japan, and to a lesser extent, Britain and Italy, were lifted out of the debris of war by the Americans who poured in billions of dollars and forgave other billions in debts. None of those countries is today paying even the interest on its remaining debts to the United States. When the franc was in danger of collapsing in 1956, it was the Americans who propped it up. And their reward was to be insulted and swindled on the streets of Paris. And I was there. I saw that. When uh, distant cities are hit by earthquake, it's the United States that hurries in to help. Managua, Nicaragua is one of the most recent examples. So far this spring, 59 American communities have been flattened by tornadoes. Nobody has helped. The Marshall Plan, the Truman Policy, all pump billions upon billions of dollars into discouraged countries. And now newspapers in those countries are writing about the decadent war among the ring Americans. Now, I'd like to see just one of those countries that is gloating over the erosion of the United States dollar build its own airplanes. Come on now, you let's hear it. Does any country in the world have a plane to equal a Boeing jumbo jet, the Lockheed TriStar, or the Douglas 10? If so, why don't they fly them? Why do all international lines except Russia fly American planes? Why does no other land on earth even consider putting a man or a woman on the moon? You talk about Japanese technocracy and you get radios. You talk about German technocracy and you get automobiles. You talk about American technocracy and you find men on the moon not once but several times and safely home again. You talk about scandals and the Americans put theirs right in the store window for everybody to look at. Even the draft dodgers are not pursued and hounded. They're right here on our streets in Toronto. Most of them, unless they're breaking Canadian laws, are getting American dollars from Ma and Pa at home to spend up here. When the Americans get out of this bind, as they will, who could blame them if they said to hell with the rest of the world? Let somebody else buy the bonds. Let somebody else build or repair foreign dams or design foreign buildings that won't shake apart in earthquakes. When the railways of France and Germany and India were breaking down through age, it was the Americans who rebuilt them. When the Pennsylvania Railroad and the New York Central went broke, nobody loaned them an old caboose. Both of them are still broke. I can name to you 5,000 times when the Americans raced to the help of other people in trouble. Can you name to me even one time when someone else raced to the Americans in trouble? I don't think there was outside help even during the San Francisco earthquake. Our neighbors have faced it alone. And I'm one Canadian who is damn tired of hearing them kicked around. They'll come out of this thing with their flag high. And when they do, they're entitled to thumb their noses at the lands that are gloating over their present troubles. I hope Canada is not one of these. 
but there are many smug, self-righteous Canadians. And finally, the American Red Cross was told at its 48th annual meeting in New Orleans this morning that it was broke. This year's disasters, with the year less than half over, has taken it all, and nobody, but nobody, has helped. Gordon Sinclair. Uh, so it must have been like early 70s after the first moonshots of 69. Yeah, so, wow. Uh, 4.32. Uh, well, we played the whole thing. I was going to play a little bit, but it's too good to stop. So there you are. Anyway, you can repeat and flounder. Let it rip Friday. A lot more coming up here. Stand by. Look out in September. We've got your afternoons covered, all right. And the morning extras got your drive-in from 6 to 10 a.m. too. What about then the politiz the politization? I don't know how do you say it? Politization. Polit politization. If that's right, I don't even know. Close if that's enough. Right. Close You're enough. doing great, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, I'm we're down the last here. couple minutes. Couple minutes. Yeah, it's good because that just because, became a promo. Like the, <laughs> yeah, the, the morning extra, 6 to 10 a.m. on Extra 106.3 FM and the Extra app. This is Dan Watkins with All Four Seasons. We've always been Atlanta's best at installing and servicing garage and entry doors. But you would be surprised at how many windows we've installed as well. So we're proud to announce a new division, All Four Seasons Windows. We now have the ability to make sure every opening in your house is safe, energy efficient, and looks darn good. So give us a call today to schedule your free sales consultation. Find out how you can decrease your energy bills and increase the beauty and value of your home with All Four Seasons Garage, Entry Doors, and Windows. Neil Bortz here. Maybe you've already taken the steps to improve your health, maybe save your life. You're using a CPAP for your sleep apnea. I've been using one for well over 20 years. So right now I'm here to tell you about a source for CPAPs and CPAP supplies here in the Atlanta area. CPAPs, etc. They're in Alpharetta. They have whatever you need. Roddy and Sharon are your CPAP experts and they'll ship nationwide. More information, CPAPs, ET com. Central Heating and Air Conditioning wants you to know the start of the new season is the perfect time to ensure your home's comfort. Don't wait like most people do to have your HVAC system serviced. Your home should have maintenance twice a year. Maintenance helps keep your system running at peak efficiency and extends the life of your equipment. So turn to Atlanta's carrier experts for your system's maintenance. With Central, you get carrier products, carrier warranty, and carrier peace of mind. It's allergy season and Central Heating and Air can fix what ails your house and possibly your family with home ventilation and air quality products. Central has packages designed around health using variable speed, fresh air ventilation, air cleaners, air purifiers, dehumidifiers, and more. Central Heating and Air is one of the few second generation locally owned and operated HVAC companies in Atlanta. With Central, you're not just a number, you're a member of the family. It's been that way since 1947, and they've serviced over 100,000 customers right here in Atlanta. Call 770-GET-HEAT or go to centralheat.com. We're smart, we care. We're Central Heating and Hey Atlanta, it's Ben, host of the Weekend Ben Burnett Show, proudly brought to you by Peach State Pride. Each and every weekend, we bring you all the issues going on around the globe and what America's ultimate role is in order to drive our agenda forward as conservatives. And if you ever miss an episode, you can download everything I've ever done on Apple, Spotify, or you can go to the podcast park. See you around, Atlanta. Your favorite. <laughs> you have no idea who this is. Do I you? do now. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have no if that flounder didn't inform me with his uh, musical excellence here of my little sheet in front of me here. <laughs> now where did that? Why do I have this stupid thing on my thing here? Oh, God, on my iPad they keep trying to <clears throat> focus. Jukalakalaki on me here. Anyway, all right. Uh, hey, how you doing? 436, it's only the Kevin Pete Flounder, David Bowie. On this day, 1975, uh, it was an interview with Playboy magazine. David Bowie announced his second career retirement. He said, quote, I've rocked my roll. It's a boring dead end. There will be no more rock and roll records from me. The last thing I want is to be some useless blanking rock singer, unquote, David Bowie in 1975. And uh, he was never heard from again. What's the matter? Yeah, he, yeah. yeah that, that was his second happen. retirement. No, yeah. no, that was 
<laughs> yeah, this time I mean it. Are those reading glasses? No, they, uh, yeah, they're kind of, you know, th- my eyes are weird. Are they prescription? But- no, no, no. They're they're a, a pharmacy. I mean, those drugstore. are the thickest. Well, you know why I get it. I know they're horrible. I mean, well, they're not. The lenses are are just normal length, but the the frames are real big. You know why? Because he can sit on top of my ear rockets. Uh, the uh, thin ones could kind of dig into the uh, ear rocket part. So I have to get these great big fat ones that sit on top without uh, okay. d- bothering me. I, I, I tell you, you th- you know, you want to be my life. You, you'll be me for about uh, four no, days. You. you take them. You put a bullet in your eye. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, seriously, you do not. You wouldn't. You would die being me. No thank you. Oh my God! All right, four thirty-eight. <laughs> our birthday list. Shut up. Our, uh, our phone number four zero four seven four one twelve thirty seven four one one two three zero. We have more flounders funnies coming up. So our girls at uh, at uh, Nucky's Hoagies and stuff like that. Our birthday list includes um, uh, bum, bum, uh, David Letterman, seventy-seven years old today. And he's got that full white beard and the thing going, and I guess he's... Didn't he just get in trouble for... Did he get divorced now or something? Or get caught with another woman or Zach something? Zach Galifianakis called him uh, meth head Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. Looks like the Unabomber. I mean, my God. Uh, and let's see. On this day in history... Uh, 1985, I guess this is really a true story. I don't remember it at the time. 1985, Ringling Brothers got caught trying to pull a fast one. Federal inspectors actually had to come out and discover that four unicorns at the Barnum and Bailey Big Top show were just goats that had been surgically <laughs> implanted with horns on their foreheads. <laughs> surgically? Oh, <laughs> Yeah. No. Surgically put horns on them. That's bad. I mean, gee, yow. Anyway. Goats are mean enough. They're uh, horrible. Without putting oh, horns on them. Awful creatures. Uh, I mean, a pointed horn. Oh, Lord. They have horns. I can't imagine. Um, I do want to, I've got a quick thing here that I, I feel a little bit bad about because it's kind of a negative story, but I want to salute this kid and uh, uh, just for a moment. A 14-year-old Wyoming boy named, uh, let's see, his name is Bobby Maher. And he and his uh, girlfriend, his childhood sweetheart, his middle school sweetheart, he's 14. He and his sweetheart were at the East Ridge Mall in Casper, Wyoming. And all of a sudden, his girlfriend started getting hassled by two 15-year-old boys wearing balaclavas. A balaclava is that, uh, is that uh, Arabian uh, Hamas headdress thing, right? Yeah, that's what that is. It's like, a, it's like an Arabian uh, Palestinian headdress. Two 15 year old boys started hassling his girlfriend. Uh, his girlfriend was at the mall and they started hassling him. So she called him uh, to say two guys are uh, forcing her and a friend around, the, uh, following them around and uh, messing with them. So the guy showed up and tried to get his girlfriend away from the two guys to keep them safe and telling the two guys, leave them alone, leave them alone. So the boyfriend, 14 year old, 14 year old Bobby Marr, shows up to protect his girlfriend and her friend. Surveillance footage shows the uh, two kids as Maher is backing away. Bobby is backing away from his attackers wearing hooded balaclava masks. And they said swing on him, swing on him, swing on him. And they picked up him by his waist, slammed him to the ground, punched him in the face. Later on, another one came in and plunged a kitchen-style knife into his guts. The two victims and suspects then quickly fled, dumped the bloody knife in their balaclava masks in the parking lot and did get caught. 15 years old, they killed a 14-year-old boy who was protecting his girlfriend. <clears throat> they are being charged as adults. Good. They have a hearing coming up. Dear God. Life in prison. Never let them out. As adults. I mean, I, again, 14-year-old boy there to protect his middle school sweetheart. Well, I can understand you, you think you're tough at that age and you beat somebody up because you're a bully or because you're stupid, you don't know better, something like that. But who raised you to pull a knife and yeah. plunge it in somebody's gut for no reason? Yeah, and the balaclava, that, that headdress business, is a, uh, well, this has got to be an important thing. Oh, no, it's be- a ski mask thing is what it is. Yeah, well, someone just called and said it's pretty much just a ski mask. Yeah, it's a ski mask type thing right. in Wyoming well, it's for the yeah, cold. Whatever. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Well, not, yeah, maybe. Never mind. Either way. Uh, now, I, I, but this four, I want. I just wanted to salute this fourteen-year-old boy named Bob, uh, Bobby Marr uh, for you know he gave his life 
protecting his middle school sweetheart. My God, it's just it's just so sad. And it makes me especially ticked off because of the following story, which I'll read for you very quickly here right now. Scrabble. Scrabble has a new uh, a new version of its game coming out that makes it easier for the Gen Z people. <laughs> well, you know they cheese you and tug. You just well tug. You know you just you just gotta. Have, well, they're not game people. They're just not board people. You know. Uh, yeah, the new, the updated version released. Why, uh, why don't you wait and do it after the break? Because I think we need to break here. I yeah. thought it was forty five. Yeah, we got time. You're good. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. You were. Okay. Oh, I bet I do something bad. I, no, I misread. Yeah, I'm just talking to someone on the phone. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, it's letter up Friday. Yeah, just where we're going. Okay. Anyway, the updated version of the Scrabble has two sides: one with the original game for players who want to be actually a, a, a legitimate, and the other is a second, less competitive version for Gen Z players. And tug. It's called Scrabble. A, a, a tug has a little problem with it. I, I he, heard he him talking about likes, word games. He likes the uh, this new version of Scrabble. Better. Oh, he does like. Yeah. Well, uh, see, the thing is, it's easy. Easier as helper cards, and what? Uh, uh, yeah, helper cards. Uh, 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 <laughs> we're uh, wine, wine. <laughs> it's like you know, poor Letter. tug. You know, when tug, you know, it's uh, the rhino tug and the smart one to come in in the morning. Once in a while, tug is talking. And he says, uh, "Wine, wine." Cause no, he, he does. No, he doesn't do that. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they have a they have helper cards, a simpler scoring system, quicker to play, allowing people to play in teams. You don't have to be by yourself anymore. What? They, well, Mattel did. I swear to God, Mattel did research. This is my point. They found that the Gen Z people don't like the competitive nature of the original game as much as older people, so the newer version will be easier and more inclusive. They found younger Gen Z people don't like the competitive nature of Scrabble. They want a game where you can simply enjoy language, words, being together, and having some fun creating words together. Not the competitive part of that, trying to win and everything. Uh, the new version of the game, they say, speaks to a trend in younger people who want to avoid competitive games and sense of losing. Mm -hmm. Instead, favoring teamwork Esteem. and collaboration, working toward a fun goal together. The whole point words, of playing a game is to win. Scrabble for <laughs> snowflakes. Fascist. Woke Scrabble. <laughs> I mean, my God. Well, and again, and, and compare, the reason I did it here is because compare that to the 14-year-old boy in Wyoming who gave his life protecting his middle school girlfriend. I mean, I guarantee you he wasn't worried, you know, being competitive, giving his life to fight off two guys okay. in ski masks. It's kind of a leap between well, those two Well, I think stories. it's a teenager, teenagers. A chasm, maybe. Teenagers one way, teen teenagers walking I, look, and, and pussies, look. and teenager gave his life fighting for his girlfriend. I mean, my God, man. I have no problem with at that age learning how to work in a team concept. There are a million well. games where you learn that. Scrabble is yeah, not one of them. This is nonsense. It's all just a balderdash. Dear God. Uh, okay, here we go. Keeping with the uh, uh, keeping with the trend in the uh, Gastonia Police Department in North Carolina, a guy identified as uh, a guy seventeen. What's a thirty-eight year old man uh, who said he came into the girls' restroom at Planet Fitness. Okay, the gym at Planet Fitness. A guy in North Carolina, thirty-eight year old man, walks in to the ladies' locker room, strips down naked, and then asks a seventeen year old girl next to him if she would be happy enough to uh, accompany of him into the shower and rub some lotion on him. Okay? 38-year-old man in the ladies' locker room, Planet Fitness, North Carolina, strips naked, says, hey, honey, 17-year-old, would you strip, uh, uh, please take a shower with me and rub some lotion on me? Well, one woman in there called 911, and guess what? Uh, they sent an emergency dispatcher. He said, well, he's walking around showing us his thing. He won't leave. Is he naked? Yeah, he's completely naked. So they arrested him, and then guess what? Planet, F Planet Fitness says, well, members are allowed to use locker rooms based on their self-reported gender identity. We have zero tolerance for harassment, though. Well, now wait a minute. If they if they have if they have a, a, the locker room based on your self-reported gender, this guy wasn't uh, harassing anybody. If he said, "Excuse me, miss, would you rub some lotion on me?" Like any, if you ask anybody else in the locker room, would you rub some lotion on me and uh, help me in the shower? There, he wasn't being uh, harassing. He was being a gentleman. So, how, so therefore, they have to let him do it. Their own policy says, you know, we don't uh, we don't have uh, harassment. He wasn't harassing. He was asking a question. So therefore, they have to let they have to let grown men come in and go naked and ask questions to ladies if they're not being offensive. If they're just asking questions, would you help me do this or help me do that? And they have to let them do it. Apparently, <laughs> do you think this is too small? Yeah, is it, would just work for anybody else? I mean, my God, is this color right on this me? This is not. Yeah, how do I look in these? You know, the, can we get lipstick? something straight between us? Dear God.
I, I mean, this is t- today. If I cut you out a beautiful oh, body, would you? God, uh, 470, 447. Good grief. <laughs> The legend, Neil Bortz, is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's Pete, and here's what you missed from the Talk Master. We need more prisons. We need more jails. We need more swift, certain punishment. The biggest deterrent to crime out there is swift and certain punishment. That's why I want to see us really streamline uh, the capital punishment laws in this country to where we can convict a murderer, sentence him to death, Give them a, a streamlined 45 day appeal process and then fry them. Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 1063 or listen anytime on the Extra 1063 app. Is this the year you want to grow your business? Do you want to expand your team? Build a new office? Hey, it's Tug, and I want to tell you about First Liberty Building and Loan. Are you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later you're dealing with a new person? You won't have to with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they can help you too. They know the patterns, they know the ebbs and flows, and they know business. Now the Frost family wants to know you. FirstLibertyGA.com. Buying a building, building a building, buying a franchise, or expanding. Reach out and spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. FirstLibertyGA.com. By the way, if you're a young banker and you want to work with a team that's faith-friendly with a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to First Liberty Building and Loan at FirstLibertyGA.com. That's FirstLibertyGA.com. Hey, sandwich lovers. Today is your lucky day. There's a whole new way to roll for lunch or dinner delight with Nucky's Hoagies in the Roswell Corners Shopping Center. Now open. Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell is family owned and operated by the subsisters, Stacy and Shannon, whose love language is food and Nucky's Hoagies, their passion. When you bite into a Nucky's Hoagie, you'll taste the difference. The softest hoagie rolls ever, along with hunger quenching sandwich combinations. Make Nucky's Hoagies in Roswell on Woodstock Road your new favorite spot for lunch or dinner. Hey Atlanta, it's Lowe's for Howard Brothers and Honda Power Equipment. It's time to cut the grass. Yay! Which may mean that it's time to upgrade your mower. Look no further than Howard Brothers and Honda Power Equipment. Honda mowers are easy to start and reliable. You want a mower that makes the job less of a chore and more of a pleasure. And Honda has you covered. Genuine Honda mowers are known for their reliable engines and outstanding performance. Howard Brothers has everything from the premium Honda residential mowers to the Honda commercial walk-behind mowers. The grass is always greener when you take care of it with Honda and Howard Brothers. Hey there, it's Janelle King, host of the Janelle King Show right here on Extra 106.3 FM, where we are unafraid and unapologetic. We explore the topics that matter the most. You can catch us on Saturdays at 4 p.m. and Encore episode on Sundays at 9 a.m. And catch up on past episodes by going to the podcast park right here at Extra 106.3 or wherever you get your podcast every single Tuesday. Until then, stay unafraid, stay unapologetic, and never stop stop seeking the truth. Hey, Atlanta golfers. Did you know that one of the best courses in Georgia is located right here in Tucker? Heritage Golf Links is a beautiful mixture of modern and traditional link style play with incredible facilities and beautiful views designed around a 20-acre lake. And when you're done playing, have a drink at our full bar or a great meal while sitting on our lakeside patio overlooking the course. So come on out and have a great full Georgia day at Heritage Golf Links. Book your tee time online at heritagegolflinks.com or on our new app that is available now. Mm-hmm. Da, da, da. I hear the sounds of the child. Hellstones. Uh, 1967, Mick Jagger punched in the face by an airport official during a row at the Le Bourget Airport in France. Mick Jagger lost his temper after the Rolling Stones were being searched for drugs, resulting in them missing their flight. 
So he got in a, in a fight, and the guy he got punched in the face. <laughs> what airport was that? It was at the Le Bourget. Very good. Yeah, the airport is the Francaise. Eh? <laughs> but of course. And our birthday list includes, uh, well, I'm a, you know, bilingual. <laughs> Until we meet again. And, by, <laughs> and the case is solved. <laughs> I do not tell the monkey what to do. <laughs> the monkey is a businessman. I am a musician. <laughs> Beg your pardon, monsieur. <laughs> I don't, he doesn't tell me what to pen. He doesn't tell me what to play. I don't tell, I don't him, tell him what to what do to with do. the money. <laughs> Our birthday list includes Ed O'Neill, seventy-eight, Modern Family, married with children, superstar. You know, good for him. A guy who's not particularly uh, a great looking as a leading man type guy, but uh, he sure was making a lot of money and a lot of good things and a lot of fun times for people. So good for you, Ed O'Neill, seventy-eight years old. You want a joke? I do. Tracy has sent, in, sent this in. Is this girl Tracy? Tra girl Tracy. Oh, man, do I remember a girl named Tracy. I met on a golf course doing a commercial uh, back on the radio many years ago, and uh, she was 22, I was 45 or something like that. And Anyway, sorry, go ahead. <clears throat> when I I'm was sorry. 17. Oh, man, oh, God. She, oh, what a... Mm. Can I tell the joke? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like like when Bortz yesterday That's asked you you've ever been on a farm. <laughs> I've just had a great it's a memory. yes, no question. Well, you Five know, minutes I, later. No. <laughs> 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 he's still reminiscing about dairy products. I thought he wanted me to talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got 20 minutes once a week. <laughs> he has one question, and you take off. Well, I warned him. <laughs> For five minutes. I told him. I told him we are going to do it, Judge. <laughs> anyway, uh, Tracy says, this is just for you. Yeah, for me. It's a guy talking to uh, his horse. All right, sir. And the guy says, this is my horse. I call him Mayo. And sometimes mayo nays. Oh, God. Hey, ho. Me. And the horse is saying, idiot. Idiot, yeah. Well, that's and So Tracy right. has sent that to I you. wonder if that's my Tracy from many years I'll ago. I'll show you a photo of her. See little if we... little brunette, little tiny. Little, oh, God, she She's, was a Tracy's doll. a very attractive woman, so I'm just saying. Oh, Tracy's beautiful. Yeah. Well, Tracy, you can't be sending pretty pictures and jokes to the Kimmer. No, he's sending oh, it to me. I, oh, and well, I get there it. you go. That figures. <laughs> you and your stupid mountain resort up there where you can take your chicks up there in the mountains and have all you want with everything we want. No one can hear you scream. It's like space. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to untie them or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of room. A, a couple of chicks once in a while wiggle free, but you know. <laughs> but where are they going to go? <laughs> 454. It's miles from civilization. Uh, that's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the other day... Uh, uh, Kimber Pete and Flounder, by the way, 404 741 1230. In case you want to join us, Letter Rip Friday. Uh, the other day, I, I hate when this happens, driving home on one of the local roads here and in, in, uh, getting to Roswell area, uh, 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 a 40 mile an hour, uh, two lane, double yellow line, kind of, you know, your typical kind of roadway thing. And I come over hill, and there's a dead possum right where the left tire goes. <sighs> And a car coming right at me in the other lane, oh. and I can't do anything. <laughs> so I, 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 I mean, I was going to go in the, off the thing. So I, I, I hit part of it. Oh, and I knew, I, and I, I couldn't do anything. Well, it was dead. If it's in the yeah, road, it was dead. Yeah, it was dead. It was dead. It was Unlike your dead. backyard, but, but it's I, dead. But still, I didn't want to, you know, I mean, I just I just thought, well, oh, man, now it's just so... Yeah, you hate doing that. I don't know. Anyway, so I, just, I, so I apologize to God. Whenever I, whenever I do something like that, I always apologize to God immediately. Just because it just it's wrong. What I hate is the squirrel that runs out and then he sees you and he stops and he starts and, and stops know, and yeah. starts and yeah. We're we're supposed to have a deal with squirrels. Yeah. I saw this on Seinfeld. <laughs> That's true. We have a deal with Squirrel. pigeon pigeons and squirrels. You know, you get the hell out of the way. I'm not stopping or turning. You you get out. You we're driving and you know it, so you move. I know. God. Anyway, it's at five fifty five. Four fifty five. Yeah, you move. <laughs> George is getting upset. Oh, my God. Uh, Masters underway. Holy crap of sports coming up. And Pete has a, yes, a, a, fun, a fun surprise to reveal later on, which is going to be fun. Also, uh, one more reason to be ticked off at President Scumface because he's now canceled more student loans for 200,000 followers, $5 billion. Canceling student loans for 500 by Now it's a total of 360 borrowers who are uh, not paying back their loans. 
The new finish line for the loans is now a decade sooner when borrowers faced in the past. Uh, but because of cancellations, a couple new lawsuits may change everything. But the new plan, it's a fast-track benefit uh, announcing forgiveness for 8 million Americans in the plan. Uh, 4.5 million will pay nothing because if you have a certain low income now, you don't have to pay it back. So if you if you go to school, you went to school and have two hundred fifty thousand dollars loans to study to study gender studies and you're working at McDonald's, you don't have to pay it back because you don't make enough money. Did you ever work at McDonald's? No. Flounder. Did you ever work at McDonald's? No. Their commercial says one out of every seven people has worked at a McDonald's. I don't know oh, anybody. That's nonsense. I knew people from Burger King, but I never knew anybody that worked at a McDonald's. That can't be true. One in seven. Well, I'm sure I've known people of, you know, high school kids, you know, I've, I've, all the I don't know kids anybody who, who, even in high school, worked at McDonald's. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, King, I can but, understand why they'd say that, because all their counter kids are high, uh, teenagers and stuff. But but still, I find it hard to believe. I I, I, I don't know. I couldn't name you. No, I don't know any. anybody. <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, so, you know, so there you go. If you make $12,000 or less, you don't you don't have to pay your plan back. If you took out more than $12,000, you get it canceled uh, for a longer timeline. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's unfreaking believable. Uh, he's also busy. Uh, he, uh, this week, he highlighted his plan to reduce and cancel loans for 30 million Americans in five different categories. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, why don't you just ask for their vote and say, here, when you vote for me, you know. Here's a check. Good Lord. He's buying votes. He's, he's literally buying all he's, votes. exactly what he's doing. And he, I, I, I mean, he can't stop. I mean, he's, he's, nobody <laughs> stops him. This is really hard. I mean, this is really, uh, really hard to believe. And they just passed that thing where the the damn FBI and everybody can spy on this without a warrant again. Yeah. What is well, wrong with these people? Well, I, they have fifty amendments, uh, apparently new amendments to this new FISA bill, the seven hundred two thing to pass. I don't know what they are it's though. It's not working. They they just passed it. They can spy on us without a warrant. They can still do it for but, two more years. I know they were talking earlier. They were one no. of the discussions was it whether tied. they would have to take a vote to make sure it, a warrant was issued for American it citizens. Tied. And Mike Johnson was one of those who did the tie. And he undid it. Yeah. See, he was against it. Said there was thousands of times the FBI had violated it. Then they took him in for a secret meeting inside, and they gave him the secret stuff. And now he came out and says, "Oh gosh, we need this for national security." Horse crap. He's supposed to. He's supposed to actually go tomorrow. Largo, and he's having a meeting with Trump. Long Beach, I just they're having a press conference. Right now, there's the uh, there's the podium. So if we want to take flags. that when we come back, we can. Yeah, they're late already. They're thirty minutes late already. Yeah. So and again, it's it's Trump and the Speaker Johnson. of the House who he was telling, "Don't pass this bill because you use it against me." So why is Trump going with the guy who, if he passed the same bill again? Why would Trump be standing there with him other than to say, "Well, we we got to do the best we can." Which but but once well, again, they cave in and hope to pull it off. Can we hear from some Republicans out there Good. and please explain what's wrong with your God. party? Come on, people. Holy crap. Anyway, Kimber Pete and Flounder, it's, uh, we're trying to have fun here. We have more Flounder's Funnies. <laughs> and, uh, Country's going to hell. But we'll, the, well, sure, but we're all <laughs> together. But we got a Flounder's Funnies we're coming smiling, up. smiling, and I get my new TV, uh, so that'll be sure fine. You will. Yeah, sure I will. <laughs> I can't wait to find out why it's not going to work. All right, 5 o'clock, Kimber <laughs> Pete and Flounder. I guarantee it. Get the I bet you $90. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> WFOM and W292EV Marietta on Dickey Broadcasting Station. This hour is presented by Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watches. This was no accident. Lisa Brady, Fox News. Police in Texas say a tractor trailer crash into a government building earlier today west of Houston was intentional. At least 14 people injured. One has since died. Officials say a man who has been identified as 42-year-old Clintard Parker stole an 18-wheeler from a nearby town and then gave chase to police before they say he intentionally drove that tractor trailer right through the DPS office front door. The suspect then reportedly backed the vehicle up out of the building, went off Officers moved in, pulled him out of a vet window, and made the arrest. Fox's Casey Stiegel. Investigators say the suspect was out for revenge a day after being denied a commercial driver's license. President Biden says Iran will not succeed and that the U.S. is devoted to the defense of Israel. Amid reports, Iran could attack Israel soon. President Biden says his message to Iran threatening to take military action against Israel is don't. The U.S. and Israel are preparing for Iran to retaliate against Israel for an airstrike that killed two senior men members of Iran's Revolutionary Guard in Syria.
Israel has not publicly claimed responsibility for the attack. White House National Security Communications Advisor John Kirby calling the Iranian threat viable. The Defense Department moving additional assets to the Middle East to bolster regional deterrence efforts and increase force protection for U.S. forces. Fox's Christine Goodwin. Police in Memphis in mourning after what's described as an unprovoked attack when officers responded to a suspicious vehicle call overnight. Police say the occupants opened fire, killing one officer, injuring two others. Two teens suspects involved. One killed and returned fire, the other being treated. We're told one of them was arrested just weeks ago in a stolen car with a Glock switch that converts a semi-automatic weapon into a machine gun. He was charged with stealing two vehicles before a Memphis judge set him free without bond. Fox's Jeff Manasso. America is listening to Fox News. Hey, it's Jesse Kelly. Are you still on the fence about owning gold? It's time to pull the trigger with the Oxford Gold Group and buy gold and silver. Nobody can predict the future, but we can't put our head in the sand either. The Oxford Gold Group are the pros. They make owning gold and silver simple and easy to understand. Call Oxford Gold Group right now and you may qualify for up to $10,000 in free precious metals. Call 833-995-GOLD. That's 833-995-GOLD. To my newborn baby boy, the day you arrived was one of the happiest days of my life. Right up there with the day I bought my RV from that guy on the internet and insured it with Progressive. (laughs) What a deal. Just know, son, I'll always be here for you. And by here, I mean in the middle of absolutely nowhere. In my RV. Protect your baby with an RV policy from Progressive. Take as little as four minutes to see what you could save at Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Ruff, ruff. <laughs> Stand by. It's only me. Look out. It's only the Kimmer with Pete Davis and Flounder at the controls on 1063. Letter rip Friday. Anything goes beautiful Friday afternoon. Braves are in Miami. We'll uh, talk about that. The Masters under full swing and a couple of disastrous events, especially in that number 15, that little par five. And man, it's that's a hole where you you're, you're looking, you're thinking eagle, you're licking your lips on that little baby. But it's a, one of the toughest second shots if you're going for it because of the plateau of that green. Anyway, we'll talk about it with Pete and a special surprise. Pete's going to uh, have not, uh, something no, fun well, to talk about. Okay, it only is good for me. No, no, no well, I know, but it's still, I, I'm happy for you because I, I have kind of a a, a, a tangential, uh, you know, relationship kind of a deal. So I'm, I'm living excited. vicariously I, through me. Exactly, or? that's all I got. Okay. You know, without my TV, I got the stable, and that's it. So, I'm, TV died, so I'll tell her that later. Anyway, uh, 404-741-1230 if you want to join us. 741-1230. Kimmer, Pete, and Flounder. Um, and, uh, we've got, in fact, we'll update, we'll, we'll talk some more about the update of the O.J. Simpson case, which is coming up here, too. And you're going to hear from that uh, really uh, just a tremendously impressive black woman who met Donald Trump at the Chick-fil-A the other day and then was on uh, TV this morning talking about how the local media is shameful, trying to pretend that everybody hates Donald Donald Trump, if you're not white, uh, I mean, it's just a, an awful lot of stories going up that. Also, we will definitely talk about the Memphis shooting. You just heard a part of that on the news here. Uh, again, if you just tuned in, an 18-year-old punk and a 17-year-old punk in a car doing something suspicious. Cops show up to see what was going on. Uh, at least one of the guys inside, the 18-year-old, starts shooting and shoots and kills a police officer who just went up to the car to see what was going on. The 18-year-old killed a police officer. They drove away. They got caught. Uh, two of the cops were, were shot. One of them killed. The 18-year-old was also shot and killed, thank God. Last month, the cop killer teenager, the teenager last month, was arrested for driving a stolen car, for being uh, with two stolen cars, and being in possession of a gun that he turned into a fully automatic machine gun. So, let's repeat. 18-year-old kid, last month in Memphis, Tennessee, caught in a stolen car, charged with two stolen car cases, and carrying a machine gun. And he goes to the jail, they uh, book him, and then he goes to court, and the judge says, you're free to go. No bond. 
no bail. Are you kidding me? A machine gun in a stolen car? You're free to go? Holy crap, why isn't a crowd of marchers surrounding that judge's house right now with pitchforks and torches? That judge ought to be going to jail. That judge is responsible for a cop killing. Period. That judge is responsible, along with the non-parents who raised that less than animal. Animals don't do this. Subhuman. By ectoplasm or whatever you might call it. Just, just you know, lunk. Dear God, I mean, I, I honestly, I can't believe it. And because of a Democrat, Democrat mayor, Democrat prosecutors, Democrat, I mean, it's unbelievable in Memphis, Tennessee. In fact, I heard the guys before us telling the one of them used to, used to live there. In fact, does live there. Uh, one of the guys, still, I think, still, no, he just moved to Nashville. He used to live in Memphis. He grew up there as a kid, and he, he was talking about the difference. He looked up the statistics. Na, uh, uh, Memphis, Memphis has a higher murder rate than New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, yep. and most other big cities in the world. It has 15% higher murder rate than uh, uh, nearby cities. Said on Clay and Buck that if you commit a murder in Memphis, you'll get away with it yeah. over 70% of the time. Yeah. Now, this kid is dead. Thank God they killed him. But again, how could a judge let the, I, because this is a Democrat. They don't want to, they don't want to, they, think it's, they think it's unfair not to give the teenage kid a second chance. Well, he didn't know that, you know, the gun, but he didn't use it, you know, until they did Do you want to do Trump? Oh, is it, they're live now? Yeah, let's go to Donald Trump live with the Speaker of the House down in Mar-a-Lago. Because <laughs> ours is up 67%. The greatest border. Greatest. <laughs> All right, now, is this a border thing? I thought it was going to be on the on the FISA thing. Other stuff. Huh? Just a little bit. We're going. What about FISA? Mike Johnson. It's a munchkin. <laughs> uh, all right, how long do you want to go here? See if he starts with FISA. Uh, nah, screw it. They're not going to talk about FISA. No. Right, so let's kill it. 
No. I love, uh, Flyer, we'll, we'll kill it here. We're done. Uh, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, we'll check back. But again, if they... St- I, I can't... Well... He's I, a liar and a weasel. He sold us down the river. So. Well, again, if they took out the protections that were that were not in the visa plan to stop them from doing things like they did to Trump... Mm-hmm. And, and they, I, they, I always and said the, the other Catholics guy's Catholics and the school... Yeah, absolutely. The people the going parents. to, uh, to uh, school board meetings and everything. I mean, you know, yeah, uh, 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 Christian Catholics were on the, uh, on the hate list. Uh, to people investigating domestic the most, terrorists, d- d- yeah, the most dangerous domestic terror uh, uh, Christians. Dear God. Anyway, uh, five. Gosh, it's five twelve already. Uh, just quickly again, uh, the Golden Bachelor. Yes, uh, <laughs> Flounder, you want to play the little musical thing? If you can still find it, I did. I threw a bone on you here. Uh, yeah, the Golden what? Bachelor, Gary, but not you a bone what? actually. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> said the actress to the bishop. Yeah. <laughs> That's not my belly button. Uh, Gary and his wife Teresa uh, have uh, called it quits after three months. No. Uh, yeah, and they never actually lived together. They were living in separate states for the last three months after they got married. I hope there's some video of them yelling at each other or something. <laughs> and, that, and didn't you just look up that apparently he's, she's had to give back the ring? Forty-something thousand dollar ring? I guarantee he didn't pay for that. The, the shows all pay for all that stuff. Their honeymoon, they don't have to pay for any of that. They, in fact, they pay them a salary so they can take off from their job. It's a prenup, man. Oh, my God. What a joke. They said, well, they, they were so in touch with their families. They didn't want to leave their families. They couldn't decide where to move together. She was in New Jersey. He's in South Carolina or wanted to be in South Carolina. And she said, oh, I'm not moving. He's not moving. So that was a ball game. You'd think that they would, you know, that Figured would have been a out. thing. You know, I mean, didn't they talk about, what, they do that on the farmer's wife thing. Where they, Do you really want to move from New Jersey to a ranch in Wyoming? I mean, you know, we really need to talk about this. You know, I mean, my God. Anyway, he said, we had looked at homes and South Carolina, we considered New Jersey, looked at home after home, never got to the point we could make the decision. We have so much love. Oh, oh, by the way, this is killing me. One more thing, Flounder, we can go. We've received so much love and support from so many people who watch The Golden Bachelor. I don't think we can tell you how many people told us that it gave them so much hope. <laughs> we want none of that to change for anybody. <laughs> oh, bull crap. <laughs> yeah, over. great hope. You lasted zero. You didn't even live together. You stayed in separate states. <laughs> separate states, ladies and gentlemen. Giving hope. Yeah, I feel so much better now. Maybe there's a lady out there for the camera to love now that I'm almost 80. <laughs> I hope she lives in the same, you know, zip code. Yeah. Good God. D I V O R C I E. 514 with a kiver feet and flounder and sports is coming up next. Oh, my goodness. Uh. The latest breaking news to the conservative voices you know and trust. Your best new follow on social media is Extra 1063. We're at XTRA 1063 on Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, Threads, and LinkedIn. And pretty much any social media you scroll through every day. And we drop exclusive giveaways, new daily content, and the latest breaking news from Georgia and across this great nation. Interact with your favorite extra personalities. Get the latest on our live events and so much more follow at extra 1063 across all your social media and keep up with atlanta's only conservative voice is the tax deadline causing you anxiety searching for elusive 1099s and trying to uncover any exemptions if so you're not alone every year georgians find themselves looking backwards to file with the irs reporting tax history But what if you were to flip the script? Not just report your taxes, but actually planning for them. We're Master Plan Retirement Consultants. We're local with offices in Marietta. We work with folks just like you to create a personalized, tax-efficient strategy designed to last a lifetime, a crucial piece to the holistic retirement plan. Do you have a retirement roadmap? You should. It's never too late. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Don't wait any longer. Visit MasterPlanRetire.com. Advisory services offered through Master Plan Retirement Consultants, Inc., a registered investment advisory in the state of Georgia. Insurance, tax, and commodity services offered through Frickson Associates, Inc., DBA Master Plan Retirement Consultants. The aforementioned are affiliated companies. My name is Pamela Conley. 
I've worked for Bruce Hagen for 22 years. It's been the best years of my life, and not everyone can say that about their jobs. I'm the intake specialist for new clients, so I am the voice you hear when you call our office and the first face you see when you come by. I love sharing my years of experience with people and alongside Bruce, helping them through what is so often a really hard time. My name is Pamela Conley, and I work for Bruce Hagen. Let him work for you. Hagen-Law.com. Coleman Yards is one of the most unique and dynamic event venues in the country. It has everything. A hundred years of history, it is a beacon to the local community, and right now it's seeing close to 8,000 people per day for a balloon museum. Naki and Stephanie are there to make sure events and client experience are top-notch and particularly excited to test the venue out at full capacity for the upcoming 420 Fest. Hear their story and more on this week's episode of The Marketing Mad Men. Tune in Saturdays at 3 p.m. right here on Extra 106.3. 517. By the way, again, thank you to our friend uh, Peter who told us what the word WAVES stands for. The lady we're talking about, the Navy girls. Uh, Women accepted for volunteer emergency service. Helping the Navy in World War II so the men could go fight. Hey, wait a minute. Holy crap, it's sports with Pete Davis. All right, Braves begin a series in Miami tonight. Max Free trying to right the ship yeah. against the Marlins' Trevor Rogers. Mm-hmm. That's a great name for a pirate, Trevor <laughs> Rogers. Uh, Bravo has recalled Darius uh, Vines from Gwinnett. They sent Alan Winans down. And when I say sent him down, they didn't put him down. There's oh. a big difference. Oh, no. I... Even though he is now literally on a farm upstate playing with his friends. <laughs> A uh, triple A or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. yeah. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> thanks to friend of the show, Bill Sheehan. Yours truly will be loitering yes. around Augusta National Golf Club this oh, Sunday. Yeah. I hope you're going to bring bring a friend and tell him you'll see him later. A, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to be a decent human being. As opposed to what the Kimmer did to Bill Sheehan, one of the great Americans of all time. That's right. And I totally humiliated myself and being an idiot when he invited me to the Masters. I'm a jerk. I'm <laughs> yes. sorry. Anyway, so tell the story. So I will be the one dressed like former Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega. <laughs> I have checked out the uh, what you got to wear. Yeah, you got to be right for the Masters on Sunday. You're going on Sunday? On Sunday. And I never Man. got an answer as to whether you could wear cargo pants or shorts. Nice, Pete. Well, I'm not. Oh, I'm, dear I God. have a nice pair of shorts. I'm going to wear. It's going to be 84. I know. Well, are, you can wear shorts. Saturday's you beautiful. Can't wear, you don't want to wear cargo shorts. I mean, we got nice uh, Bermuda shorts. You can do that. Yeah, I got a pair of white shorts. I got a yeah. white shirt and white shorts. Seriously, I'm going to stand out. In well, the, you, you, you get a badge. <laughs> <laughs> ask your directions. Badge? You don't need no stinking How badge. How get to 14? Yeah, right. Here's Bill's today's trivia question. Bill right. Sheehan's trivia question yeah. of the day. All right. What is the Delta Desk? I thought we talked about this yesterday. No, we talked about, uh, what did we talk about yesterday? It was something that's Somebody called Somebody else's desk. Shelf. No, somebody's shelf. It was a shelf. Yeah. Cliff's shelf. The Delta or Desk. Oh, my. Uh, let's see. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't have any idea. Uh, back in the day, on number two, if you hit the ball two left and into the woods... You might as well just walk up to the Delta desk and book a flight because you would not be <laughs> playing the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. The woods on number two. Is that the deal? Yes. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Masters update. Jordan Spieth's plus nine. He's probably going to miss the cut. Oh, uh, tell the little people what happened there. Well, oh, he, he, wow. he well he did it was a few on 15, years ago, right? He does it almost every time on one of the holes. He just goes nuts I and think it was quadruple on, bogeys. I think it was on 15, which is that little short par five that has the plateau green. So when you're shooting from the fairway, if you want to, you have two choices. You can either lay up a, a, about a hundred yards and then hit another hundred yard shot. So it's really it's a tricky uh, thing, or you go for it from the fairway. But the problem is the shelf is so uh, fast and small that if you hit and lands too hard, you're going over, and then you're in big trouble. Mm-hmm. So either way, if you go in the water short or long, and that's apparently what he did, trying to get too tricky and get too close to that little green thing. It's, really? Is that what it's he did? a tough yeah. shot? Yeah, it's bad. Okay, what we got here? We got Bryson DeChambeau, still uh, minus seven. He oh, gets uh, wow. seven under. Yeah, Scotty so. Scheffler tied with him at uh, I seven like under. Scheffler. I like Scheffler. I hope he does great out there. Yep. Uh, let's see. Max Homa is uh, six that's under. Yeah. yeah, so that's three Americans at the top yeah. right now. Yeah. And then you have a couple Europeans. You got Nikolai Hogard. Don't know him. He's from Denmark. Mm. He's uh, four under. And Cam Davis, no relation, is uh, three under, along with Colin Morikawa. I've always liked watching him play. Yeah. So let's see what some of the big guys are doing here. They were saying that it was going to be plus four would be the cut, but that really? was earlier. I don't know if that's Anything changed. Anything on Tiger? Well, t- 
Tiger. Yeah, he was plus one last time I checked. Let me check again. Well, Dan? if he makes the cut, he will set the record for most number of cuts made at Augusta. Again, not the number of tournaments played, but the number yeah. of cuts made. He'll beat Freddie Couples and way more than Nicholas and the other guys. Well, Mickelson is plus one. Shoffley is even. Tiger is plus one. Okay. So that it looks like he's. Is he teed off yet, though? We mean. Oh yeah, yeah. he's. I think he's actually. Let's check here. He's finished. Yeah. Oh my God, he made it. Yeah. He just set a record. Yeah. And when he had to play a lot today because he couldn't finish yesterday. I don't yeah. believe. So uh, not back in those. Uh, yeah. Oh wow, that's going to hurt him in the long run. Here, yeah. Rory McIlroy plus one, and uh, seems to be the big boys right now. Yeah, so, uh, John Rom, the defending champ, is plus three. Ooh, my, no, not very good. Mm. Uh, viewers were shocked to hear Jim Nance. Jim Nance. Jim, they were shocked with Jim uh, Nance. Who, Jim Nance cussed on the air during CBS's coverage of the Masters uh, today, Flounder. He, fly, kept yes, he cussing sir. on the air. He was with, cussing on the he air. He was in the back of the room, and then he didn't know uh, he was going to uh, be talking I at all. I warn you. And I have to throw something at the... Uh, he was going to be I'm, I'm throw calling something into the... Okay. <laughs> uh, Jim Nance, I warn you, you may find this soundbite extremely disturbing if yes. you're a Jim Nance right, fan here. Be careful here. here. Yeah, it's coming up any minute now. Well, he's very shy. He didn't want to, you know... He's, he's, he also knows there's a ticklish little pitch coming up. <laughs> the shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> a restrained Nance ushered off the grounds yelling, I said pitch, I said pitch with a P. <laughs> a ticklish That's little. Funny. We're going to save that guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't go away with that one. <laughs> uh, Kentucky finally has their replacement for head coach John Calipari, Mark Pope, officially yeah. the Wildcats' new basketball coach. I'm sure you're a big fan, Mark Pope. Mark, big uh, the Marks Mark are at Pope Rooney. Yeah. yeah, and uh, uh, where he coached. Nebraska yeah. State, I think was. Nebraska uh, State. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pope was a captain on Kentucky's 96 national championship ah. team. He has so been, he's never coached, I guess. Yeah, Brigham Young. Oh, bring them young or bring them around, but just bring them. Oh, sorry. Five seasons. Wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, then. It says uh, they went after him after several high-profile candidates turned down the job or distanced themselves from the search. Now, what would that be uh, with the history? Because the they don't have, they can't get recruiting anymore? Well, Calipari said they really didn't help out with uh, NIL. NIL. And Arkansas is. So, well, but, but I thought they've always said big boosters I would have know. all the money in the world, like Texas. I Kentucky know. basketball? I know. What the hell happened? I, I, I always thought it's funny that some of the Kentucky fans, and Amanda's a Kentucky fan, she went there. Yeah, cool. But some of the Kentucky fans were actually laughing at the Baylor people saying, You think you got money? We are Kentucky. I was like, You really are going to tell Texas yeah. people you Texas, got money? Oil money? Yeah, right. Yeah. You got horse money, but you can have money? Oil, oil money. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, please. Yeah. Uh, Duke, seven foot center Kyle Filipowski is entering the NBA draft after two years with the Blue Devils. <laughs> Your Atlanta Hawks visit Minneapolis tonight. May I suggest? Just Manny's Steakhouse, uh -huh. serving USDA certified dry aged center cut beef, hand trimmed by Master Butchers. Oh. Master Butchers. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do for life? I'm a Master Butcher. Butcher, yes. A Master Bay. Master Butcher. butcher. <laughs> this is just a tease because the Falcons never draft Georgia players. No, they don't know. But the Falcons did work out former Bulldog wide receiver Lad McConkey today. Ooh, now, boy, we saw him do some yeah. very special things on the football field with the University yeah. of Georgia. Don't get your hopes up. This is the Falcons. Uh, they don't draft Bulldogs. But, yeah, I, but I'll bet they think he's too small. He's like, what, 5'10", 170 or he's something? He's a Bulldog. That they'll never. Oh, God. He, man, he did great. He I know. was special. He, I know. he could I, get open. He's quick and wiry, <laughs> and he gets open. That's the point. I'm Especially in the new offenses. They my God. Never. Uh, there are reports former Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy will not attend the NFL draft later this month, even though it's in his backyard in Detroit. You know why? No, I don't. He does it because he he's one of those guys like Will Levis was. He could go early or he could really drop, and yeah, he doesn't want to be want sitting to be part there. Of it. I don't blame him. I don't either. be with your family. Yeah, absolutely. And they say we take things too far as fans of sports in America. Well, I don't believe that. Abdurazik Hamdallah uh, is a striker for the soccer team Al Itihad. I don't know what that is, but... He plays for a soccer team. Oh, all right, sir. Last Thursday, Hamdallah's team lost a match in Abu Dhabi. Uh, That's when the player got into an argument with a fan in uh, the stands. Oh, nothing. It got so heated, Hamdallah threw water on the guy. Oh, no. And you'd think they like him. Well, uh, uh, cool. You know, it's nice desert, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the man calmly accepted that he was out of line and he left uh, quietly. So it ended nicely. That's good. Or oh, oh. the fan responded by reaching over the railing <laughs> and hitting Hamdallah with his whip. 
Whip, ladies and gentlemen. With his whip. He brought his he whip brought, to the he, soccer he, that's game. Right. And a related story. You know, I was going to say. <laughs> and I mean, the key word. <laughs> they bring whips. You can bring a whip into a well, soccer stadium? He, he parked his camel outside. I mean, I can see him standing there in line just, you know, gently using the whip, you know. <laughs> shoo, shoo. <laughs> so Hamdallah also took it like a, No, he was restrained oh. by his teammates. Oh, my. It. Who brings a whip to a game? I well, obviously. Can't imagine. Abu Dhabians yeah, do. Apparently. 1966 on this date, April 12th, the Braves play their first game in Atlanta, a crowd of 50,671 at Fulton County Stadium. Hmm. Uh, here's how this was written. All right. Okay, let me read this again. I didn't write this. Okay. The Braves play their first game in Atlanta before a crowd of 50,671 at Fulton County Stadium in front of a crowd of 50,671. <laughs> Well, I, that's something up with which I will not put up with. Yeah. It's like they write for Saturday Down South or something. It's like, uh, editor, please. Is there an editor in the room? Joe Torrey homered twice for the Braves, but Willie Stargell's home run in the 13th gave the Pirates a 3-2 to two win. Willie Stargell lived in Atlanta for a while. That's right. Yeah. Okay, it's time for our... Oh, we got the joke of the day. You love this. Uh, Ken, is it? Or uh, Kate? Nate. 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 Nate's joke of the day. All right, sure. All right. <laughs> Cameron, what kind of dog is a fighter? A fighter dog, a dog. What kind of a dog would be a uh, would be a God, what kind of a dog? Flounder, do you know? I don't know. What kind of dog would be a, flou- a fighter? A, uh, a boxer. A, a boxer. boxer. No, Abs- see, I should have known that. Absolutely. Yeah, well, Flounder's younger. He's got the quick mind. I still, it takes it takes way longer when you're this age to get get through the, all the synapses. So he's, he has he has an advantage. It's really not fair. Uh, a couple of other sports things. We yeah, that's a second here. <laughs> that's the <a> reason. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, on this day, uh, Pete, in 1927, 15 future Hall of Famers were on field at the opening day game between the Yankees and the Philadelphia Athletics. For opening day in 1927, 15 Hall of Famers, Ty Cobb, Jimmy Fox, Lou Gehrig, and Babe Ruth, among others, and they all went 0 for 3. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, okay, that's a few. Uh, the, oh, on this day in 1981, the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis, passed away of a heart attack. Mm. He had just finished watching Larry Holmes defend his heavyweight title belt in Las Vegas against Trevor Burbick in 1981. Ronald Reagan waived the rules of eligibility, and Joe Lewis was buried with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery. One of his pallbearers was Max Schmeling, who also helped pay for the funeral. German. That's right. And they became very close after after uh, their matches and so forth. Very close, especially black and white together and Schmeling being a Nazi. He wasn't not, a Nazi. No, but he was a German and the year of the... the absolutely. absolutely. Now, one last thing here, Pete. Uh, this is kind of a history in, uh, in uh, sports and baseball. 1877, a catcher's mask used for the first time in the major leagues. James Alexander Ting wore it, and here's the rest of the story. Uh, there was no protection back then. Early catcher's masks didn't have, were a mask. The only the catchers only had a rubber mouth guard. Mm-hmm. No mask of any kind. No chest guard, no shin guards, no nothing, and no glove. Are you ready for this? I had no idea. There was no protection, so the catchers, this is back in the 1800s, stood a few feet back from mm-hmm. the plate and caught the pitches on the bounce. Yeah. There was no need for the catchers to crouch. They stood up. Then in the 1860s and 70s, they needed a catcher's mask because they developed the curveball. And they couldn't mm-hmm. left the curveball because it wouldn't, it wouldn't make it. It was just a whole different kind of pitch. So they said, well, we have to pl- throw it over the plate now. A Harvard University student named Fred Thayer ha- invented the catcher's mask. He was a captain of the Harvard Nine and played third base. He was working on the curveball. Was, it was hard to master. Uh, his concern was a new catcher on the team who was this guy, James Ting, had qualified the team to play catcher. But he said, well, we can't have you back there again catching fastballs right inside of the plate. So he's walking across campus and noticed some members of the fencing team walking across the campus. Said, oh my God, we ought to try that. So and did they modified a catch a, a fencing mask strong enough to withstand hitting hit with a ball and yet still had good vision. When he visited uh, Cambridge was worn by James Ting for the first time a catcher's mask in uh, Lynn, Massachusetts in 1877 and the grousing of the opposite team complained that it gave them an advantage because they had their catchers not being 
creamed all the time in the face. Anyway, that was the story of the rest of the story of the catcher's mask. James had three other brothers. You know that? I did not know that. James uh, Ting had yeah. three other. What you... Bat, pitch, and field. And field Ting, too, as well as three 530 feet. I'm going to get that book. I swear to God, I'm getting that book. I can't repeat and flounder the thing. I just made that one up. We got Flounder's Funnies coming up, thank God. Uh, and actual newsy stuff. And then we got it all. Anyway, don't go anywhere. <laughs> Look out. Bat. <laughs> hey, it's Rhino from the Morning Extra, getting your weekday morning started from 6 to 10 a.m. Nancy Pelosi, Rhino, she's got some things to say about Donald Trump when it comes to his position on abortion. She comes out yesterday and she says he's either stupid or he thinks the rest of us are stupid. She continues to talk, says you can't be a little pro-life. You're either there or you're not. Well, that's like saying you either are for killing babies or you're not. So you're all for killing babies, Nancy yes, Pelosi. that's right. Nancy Pelosi is trying yes, to engage people into talking about abortion. There's yeah. two things we've talked about on this show. Don't talk about abortion. Mm -hmm. If you have to talk abortion, say... We're going to leave it to the states. You'll decide what what your community is going to be at standard. That's it. That's all. That's what, what President Trump did. They're trying to engage him into something further because there's no national politician that can talk about being pro-life and get elected nationally. The Morning Extra, 6 to 10 a.m. on Extra 106.3 FM and the Extra app. Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watch Company, where quality and value make the difference. Locally owned and located in Sandy Springs, offering you the finest selection of unique diamonds, sapphires, rubies, and emerald jewelry, as well as other fine gemstones. Lee Brandt Jewelry and Watches has been servicing Rolex watches for over 30 years, and their Rolex-trained watchmaker will service your watch in their state-of-the-art Rolex service center in their store. Lee Brandt uses only genuine Rolex parts, and their estimates are free. Drop by Lee Brandt in the Trader Joe's Shopping Center in Sandy Springs, or visit LeeBrandt.com. Horizon Background Screening is a fully licensed and insured private investigations firm that focuses on litigation support for law firms, criminal defense cases, and background investigations. We are also FCRA compliant and process pre-employment background checks, tenant screening, and background checks for volunteer organizations. Whether your business is a law firm needing anything from scene investigations to witness interviews or a company that requires pre-employment background checks, we have the experience you need. Visit horizonscreening.com to learn more. That's Horizon Screening. Com. Millions of guys suffer from erectile dysfunction. That's one in four men. And I can tell you, I'm one of them. If you or someone you know suffer from ED, Peyronie's disease, or PE, here's 38-year emergency room doctor and founder of Total Body Therapy of Georgia, Dr. Eric Deal. Patients who enter my office are often frustrated, hopeless, depressed, and embarrassed. I understand the problem, and I'm going to help you fix it. There are lots of competitors that don't have the credentials that I have. When you go to other clinics, you're not going to see board-certified physicians with the experience that I have. When you come to our clinic, you're going to see me. There's just not one therapy that can solve these complex issues. I'll do a complete history and physical prior to any treatment that we use. Take it from me, Dr. Deal. When it's not hard, it's really hard. Call Dr. Deal for your free one-on-one -on -one evaluation and resolve your ED, peronies, or PE issues. Total Body Therapy of Georgia, 404-777-1911. 404-777-1911. Online at stopmyed.com. Com. Hey Atlanta, it's Ben, host of the Weekend Ben Burnett Show, proudly brought to you by Peach State Pride. Each and every weekend, we bring you all the issues going on around the globe and what America's ultimate role is in order to drive our agenda forward as conservatives. And if you ever miss an episode, you can download everything I've ever done on Apple, Spotify, or you can go to the podcast park. See you around Atlanta. We're going abroad for the first time in years. To Spain. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. <laughs> Jed indeed, baby. Yeah. Speeding car rock. Mud up on the right. 
Ethan and there to a drag. <laughs> There's something I didn't find. Better if you got the nerve all the way. Dead Man's Curve. Dead Man's Curve. Now, this was part of that rock and roll in the mid-60s when teenagers were dying and saving their girlfriends from a train and stuff like that. And parents were going nuts because of songs like this. 1966. And Jan Berry from Jan and Dean was almost killed when, in fact, he did crash his car into a parked truck uh, just a short distance from Dead Man's Curve in Los Angeles. Jan Berry was partially paralyzed and suffered brain damage. He was able to walk again eventually after extensive therapy. But he almost bought it on Dead Man's Curve after the song Dead Man's Curve. And again, that rocket, that whole period of time, man, you know, tell Laura I love her. And oh, wow. I don't know. It's such a funny. It's, I, it's, I've, I, I don't know if you guys have ever had a feeling about a, a, a time in your growing up period like we had for that sort of time. I, I, it's the strangest damn feeling. Hmm. Really strange. Uh, birthday, blah, 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 Vince Gill, the uh, singer, sixty-seven. He gets to kiss Amy Grant goodnight every night. Yeah, if she's, you know, if she feels like it, you know. Anyway, <clears throat> uh, birthday. I mean, I, I, oh, here we go. Our history list. Here we got double history list. I got uh, Flounder's history and mine combined. I did mine at uh, five twenty this morning. So mine is fresher, but I have I had to combine the two together. Oh, for God's sake, just do it. All right, fine. Well, it's an important day in history, 1961. Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin took a one-orbit, 108-minute ride in a 10,000-pound vehicle, Vostok 1, to become the first man in space, the first human in space. He landed in his parachute. He was met by a terrified woman on a farm who threatened to attack him with a pitchfork <laughs> when he found out the, the, the use. He was a Russian Air Force major. Uh, on the same, That was in 1961. On the same day in 2007 the Kremlin vetoed an investigation on Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Day to find out how he actually died in a mysterious plane crash which we talked about a little while ago Pete in 1968 he was on a routine training flight with his training instructor and they crashed and died and there was a theory about shutting him up or he was going to say something or get what I mean there's a lot of thing nobody and and on this day on the exact day they celebrated Cosmonaut Day in Russia uh, in 2007, they said, no, we're not going to investigate anymore. It's over. We're mm -hmm. not going to tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. So they don't want you to know. Uh, 538. Uh, Kim Repeat and Flounder, how's that, it going? That would never happen here. Well, we would never do that. We would we, never keep secret. Oh, by the like way. The JFK. Yeah. Or yeah. Oh, in fact, Martin Luther at King. some point, somebody's got to release everything. They know. I mean, come on. They know. I mean, what, 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 who would it hurt now? Well, didn't they just come out a year ago and say the CIA did it? Yeah. And no one batted an eye? Right. So, I mean, let's let's get it out, and then it doesn't, because no one's going to be in trouble for it. Your, your, your opinion of the CIA or the FBI or anybody else is not going to change. It's not going to, oh, <laughs> boy, it was 60 years ago. Anyway, whatever. Our 5 o'clock hour, by the way, brought to you by our good friends at Lee Brandt Jewelers, where luxury jewelry and watches are affordable. Drop by their store in Sandy Springs or visit LeeBrandt.com. Kim Pete and Flounder, how's it going? 404-741-1230. 404-741-1230. And, oh, by the way, I got my new TV. I had to go to Best Buy to do the thing because it died and stuff. And they talked me into the, you know, the, a little better quality. And then it's another thing. It's a thousand bucks. I mean, you're just going to spend oh, a thousand. You're just going to spend a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. And uh, it's just way to go. And, and then the guy says, well, of course, you know, it's a smart TV. Uh, so you're going to need your Wi-Fi password and username. Go, oh, God. No, 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 no. I don't. I, I Write him the guy, down and put him in your wallet. I, I know. I said, well, I've got, I said, oh, what if I can't find it? He says, well, then you're not going to get the smart TV. I said, oh, God. I mean, so the first thing I you thought, have well, it somewhere well, because we had to we, do it when we set up your iPad. When we set up the iPad. So I, saw, I started frantically, frantically going, oh, my God, I know I've got a thousand pieces of paper in my little office area. On and your my, phone. And I know. It's I've called got notes. It in, I know. And my, I have a thing called notes and I have it in there. I'm, but, so I freaked out and then I eventually, I think I found it. So I think I'll be okay. But, but still, again, another thing. And I said to the guy, now, wait a minute. Uh, you know, technology is supposed to make everything 
easier. But the more technology, the more things it's you have to do. More difficult. And in fact, by the way, the other night I woke up this morning. It was I might have been this morning or yesterday morning. I can't remember. I woke up and it said your phone has been given its a uh, high. Uh, your, your, I never plugged it in. I, I deliberately did not plug it in, no, so they it couldn't do it. No, to no, me. no. You do it over the air now. They don't. They don't have to plug <sighs> it in anymore. You know, I spent ten minutes at Walmart last night trying to find all the adapters I need for the, for the <laughs> car for the you know everything. I know. Yeah. God. And every time they do that, of course, my ear rockets. I have to change. I mean, it's just you know, it's unbelievable. And yet, I can't take my computer box, my 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 Comcast box, my DVR box, back to the store to have them transfer all the stuff I want to save to put into a new one, or I'll lose it. And so I'm not going to get a new one. All I know is you better have the martinis ready when they show up tomorrow at eleven. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> they expect service. A little Sazerac or something. <laughs> and and by the way, it's okay. Oh, oh, here's the thing. Uh, the guy said, "Well, okay. Here's the thing. We have uh, uh, well the TV in my again. I'm renting. I'm leasing a a, a townhouse. So the, it's a wall mounted, you know, sixty five inch." Whatever it is, okay. Uh, the guy said, "Well, if you want it wall mounted, we're gonna we'll have the uh, Geek Squad come out, but they're not available for four or five or six days." I said, "Well, uh, what do you mean?" He said, "Well, if you want to just have it on a stand, uh, we can have somebody come out. We, we we have a service we hire to do jobs like that." Uh, and he said, "We can have them come out tomorrow." And I said, "Okay, fine." So I'm, it's not going to be on the wall, but I'm, it's going to be on a. I, I have a big cabinet, so it's going to be on that. Yeah. So that's the same thing. Okay. That's no big deal. Um, but I was um, uh, anyway, and he said. Um, uh, oh, there's a, a 12 hour window, which is now narrowed down to four hours. So I'm happy with that, and everything's going to be fine. So, I, 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 by the way, I'm hoping that all the things that I DVR'd through my cable system will still come in good quality. It's just the TV that's not working to play them back. So I can't even play any of my shows. It's like I don't have a TV. You need to just get over the fact those shows are gone, gone, gone. No, they're, they they're be going to be gone. Well, that's At everything's going to be gone, and I'm going to get your Streamo or whatever they call that. Fubo. Fubo. We get Fubo and Streamo. All right, 540. <laughs> it's like half the price of Comcast. <laughs> well, and then I, but I got the internet. I mean, I've got my internet and my, and my uh, uh, email and stuff. So uh, would that, I have to do all that differently? or uh, Maybe. Oh, God. See, see what I mean? Ask them. That's what the geeks are for. I know. I will. I'm going to ask them tomorrow. Okay, we got a newsy thing. Let's do. We'll do a newsy thing, even though it's kind of a goofy Friday. Where we're just I, I, the freaking golden bachelor, my ass. And by the way, saying, well, just because we didn't make it, they didn't make it a day. They got married on a honeymoon, and then they went to their separate states. They had three months. They weren't even living together in separate. They were in separate states. Sounds perfect. <laughs> yeah, what a great way to do it. What's the problem? You meet every few months. You have a little honeymoon, paid for by yeah. somebody else, and then you send her home. <laughs> what a deal! I used to pay a little extra for that. I, I remember when I was just on my vacation. I'm at the Hyatt Regency, I was paying seven hundred dollars a night, and I remember I used to be when I paid that much, I had a pretty girl in it. Yeah. <laughs> Came with the room. Boy, those games are over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, welcome to modern day old man America, Kemmer. God, I used to have a pretty girl in there. You yeah, still can. Yeah, right. I don't have that kind of cash. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you get me some cash, I'll give me a pretty girl and weekend girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Gary and and uh, D- Teresa. God, you uh, yeah. And said oh, we don't want this to mean you give up hope on your finding love in your senior year. Yeah, oh, I think that's exactly what it shows. Yeah, you you can't get along. You can't decide where to <laughs> live together. <laughs> You're too old for love. God Almighty, that's what we've learned. Good Lord. All right, Father, let's get that uh, police chief in here for a second. This is an incredible story. A police officer showed up for a a suspicious vehicle in Memphis, Tennessee this morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. Cop goes up to the car and all of a sudden gets shot and killed. And another cop gets shot and not quite killed, but almost killed by two teenagers in the car. They take off. They finally get caught. The police fire back and kill the the guy who killed the cop killer who did did it is 18. Here now for the background, which you will not, if you haven't heard this before, you won't believe Leave it and think about who's running Memphis, Tennessee. Here is the police chief. Her name is Sarah Lynn Davis talking about the background and what happened of the cop killer this We're morning. We're struck by gunfire. Tragically, one of our officers lost his life. That officer is Joseph McKinney. One suspect was 18 years old and the other suspect is 17 years old. The 18 year old suspect was arrested in March 2024 by MPD in a stolen vehicle with an illegal modified semi-automatic weapon with a Glock switch attached. The Glock switch converted the weapon to a fully automatic machine gun. He was also charged at that time 
for two stolen vehicles and having a programming device commonly used to steal cars. The suspect was released at that time without bond. <sighs> 18 years old, arrested last month. Last month. Two stolen car charges and a machine gun and stolen ba- and a, a, a thievery burglary tools or whatever the official charge is. And they took him to the jail and they uh, fingerprinted him and then they took him to the judge and he said, you're free to go. No bond, no bail. I'm telling you that freaking judge is responsible for that dead cop. The prosecutor's responsible for the dead cop. The mayor's responsible. Every I, I, the Memphis, Tennessee. I'm my God. I can't believe there aren't people with pitchforks and torches right now just demanding justice. I mean, honest, I, I can't believe it. They a month ago, and this kid was so grateful to being given a second chance when he's 18 years old that because the cops showed up in his car, he killed him. Everybody in America running for a DA position. They the local newspaper. You need to find out if it's Soros behind them. George Soros funded the, the uh, PAC that, that funded the DA in Memphis. And I guarantee that the prosecutors and the mayor and everybody else, too. The plan is to destroy this country. How is it possible that a judge... Uh, uh, any comments from that judge? I wonder whether he's hiding right now. I tell you, if I, were, if I were the family of that cop, I'd be knocking on his freaking door. Anyway, 546, camera feet and flounder. Here we go. Look out, look out, look out. The legend Neil Bortz is only on Extra 106.3. Hey, it's the camera. How's it going? Here's what you missed from the talk master. But I'm watching the TV last night, and the reporter kept talking about gun violence. You hear that all the time. Gun violence. A question. When somebody gets into a wreck and somebody dies, did they die from car violence? No. They died because the driver of a car took an action that resulted in their death. Catch Neil's commentary every day on Extra 106.3. Or listen any time on the Extra 106.3 app. Join a Second Chance Bail Bond CEO Daniel Madelon and host Tug Coward for the weekly radio show Back Your Blue. They will highlight special initiatives, criminal justice programs, and community events aimed at keeping our communities safer. Tune in Saturdays at 10 a.m. to learn some good news about and from the law enforcement and justice communities. This week's guest is Marietta PD's Chuck McPhillamy. Tune in on Saturdays or catch up on all past episodes wherever you get your podcasts or at the podcast park. No one plans on going to jail, but when it happens, it's important that you know who to call. Call A Second Chance Bail Bonds, where we believe everyone deserves a second chance. Whether your loved one's been arrested in Cherokee, Clayton, or any of the other metro Atlanta counties in between, A Second Chance Bail Bonds works fast to help expedite release within hours. A Second Chance. It's better to know us and not need us than need us and not know us. Call A Second Chance 24-7 at 770-627-3235 or online at ATL. Bail.com. I enjoy a good night's sleep, and I like to breathe while I'm sleeping. My wife appreciates that, too. That's why I wear a CPAP. You want the right machine. You want expert advice. You want all the supplies that go with it. You get it all at CPAPs, etc. in Alpharetta. Machines, masks, tubing, filters, cleaning supplies, all of it, and they ship nationwide. Walk-ins, by the way, are welcome. CPAPs, etc., Alpharetta, CPAPSETC.com. What are your plans for your business this year? Hey, it's Tug. Do you want to expand and grow? Are you exhausted by going to lenders, building a relationship, and a week later, you got a new person to deal with? You have to start all over again? You don't have that with First Liberty Building and Loan. The Frost family has been helping businesses grow since the 90s, and they want to know you. Unlike big banks, they want to partner with you. The Frost family knows the patterns. They know the ebbs and flows. They know business. Get to know them at FirstLibertyGA.com. Building a building? Buying a building? Buying a franchise? Expanding? Reach out to them. Spend 10 minutes with them. See if you're a fit for them and if they're a fit for you. You do that at FirstLibertyGA.com. 
And by the way, if you're a young banker and want to work with a team that is faith-friendly and has a culture of excellence, First Liberty might be a good match. Reach out to them today. First Liberty Building and Loan. FirstLibertyGA.com. That's First Liberty. GA.com. This is Dan Watkins with All Four Seasons. We've always been Atlanta's best at installing and servicing garage and entry doors, but you would be surprised at how many windows we've installed as well. So we're proud to announce a new division, All Four Seasons Windows. We now have the ability to make sure every opening in your house is safe, energy efficient, and looks darn good. So give us a call today to schedule your free sales consultation. Find out how you can decrease your energy bills and increase the beauty and value of your home with All Four Seasons Garage and Entry doors and windows. Spring is the perfect time to bring a group out to a game at Truist Park to enjoy great weather and Braves baseball. Come experience the brand new private Jim Beam Bourbon Decks located on the lower level down the left field line. The Jim Beam Bourbon Decks have a great view of the field while incorporating a private setting and bar access for your group to easily socialize while you cheer on the Braves. Visit Braves.com slash hospitality to snag this amazing new space for your crew this season. Ozzy's punished another one, they get 2 nothing Braves. And come experience another brand new space in right field, the Blue Moon Beer Garden, offering the largest variety of Molson Coors beer options and unique food pairings. And there's a special ticket offer for any weekday game during the regular season. Tickets are only $30 and include a grandstand reserved game ticket and $15 added value to use toward food or beverage. A limited number of tickets are available for this special offer, so lock in your seats now at Braves.com slash Blue Moon. Atlanta Braves baseball. We are Braves country. Down on it. Oh, man. He's got, we're watching the Masters. <laughs> it's a guy in a bunker and a downhill line in the back of the bunker. There's no chance of getting this anywhere near them. Yeah, he's in the back. That's 12. A little par three. This ought to be fun. Uh, oh, he man. pulled it off. What a great shot. Wow. Oh, my God. He pulled it off. Two feet. Holy cow. I don't know who it was, but he's a beautiful shot. Shoffley. Shoffley's a great. I, love, I like Shoffley. Good for him. And if he putts, he could win. If he's putting on, if it's putting on, he's going to win. Uh, 551, Kimber, Pete, and Flounder. Guess what? Bill Haley recorded Rock Around the Clock at Temple Studios in New York City on this day in 1954. Many consider it to be the song to put rock and roll on the map, but not for a while. It wasn't until it was, it was nothing of a song until it was used as the opening title theme for the film Blackboard Jungle with Sidney Poitier and uh, uh, Vic Morrow. Went on to be a worldwide number one hit. The biggest selling pop single with sales over 25 million. Written by Max Friedman, James Myers was first recorded by Italian American band Sunny Day and His Nights. I've heard that version. Sidney Poitier was in that movie? Yeah. Huh. Was, I, was he, he was the uh, black kid. Wasn't it Sidney Poitier? Was the black kid uh, who was being picked on or something? In the te- uh, uh, Glenn, was it Glenn Ford? Yeah, uh, oh, Glenn yeah. Ford, was, Glenn Ford was the teacher, and uh, Vic Morrow was the punk, and I think Sidney Poitier was the black guy they were You're picking right. on. Yeah. Uh, birthday includes uh, Herbie Hancock, 80, oh my God, Herbie Hancock is 84. Damn. And Andy Garcia, the actor. I like, he's been good, when he was in uh, Ocean's 11 or 12 or whatever, Andy Garcia is 68 uh, years old today. And on a quick history thing here, 1988, Harvard University got a patent for a genetically altered mouse. The first patent on a living form, 1988. 1955, the polio sulk vaccine is safe and works against poliomyelitis. It works by activating immunity by developing protective antibodies to polio. It was effectively ruled safe and effective in 1955 on this very day. Okie dokie. Uh, let's see. Kimber, Pete, and Flounder. Oh, the OJ thing. Um, oh, some more of the OJ. Me- I, I'll tell you what. Let's, I'll save that for later. Let's play the uh, soundbite, Flounder, of that. Uh, really, I, I'm, I'm so impressed with this uh, woman named uh, uh, Michaela Montgomery. She's with Conserve the Culture. Culture, the founder of that group. She was a woman, you may have heard her screaming and yelling, having a great time at Chick-fil-A when Donald Trump showed up. And here's what that, it's not about that like that happened when he showed up on Wednesday here in Atlanta. I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Thank we support you. you. Uh, we support you. you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay.
<laughs> well, that, they were pretty happy to see him. They're hugging and going like crazy. Well, now this this lady, Michaela Montgomery, was also on TV on Fox and Friends this morning. And uh, we'll just listen to what she... I mean, I, I, if this doesn't make just common sense to you, maybe maybe the, the chance that we're bringing things around together where people are no longer stuck by being divided into categories uh, because this, may, uh, this woman makes a lot of sense. The general consensus or social media would have you thinking that if President Trump were to show up to the HBCU campuses or walk around the ABC community, that like some angry mob would form or a riot would ensue and that he would not be welcome. Black school. And clearly the sentiment in that room the other day was the complete opposite. He was very welcome. People were excited to see him. People showed up in support of him. And people, um, of course, were from all four institutions within the AEC. Um, the local HBCU community in Atlanta, and they all showed up in support of them. So it's actually kind of crazy to see people in an uproar when all four institutions were legitimately represented, and all four institutions were represented by said students who wanted to support President Trump. You know, McKay- and I. Re- Appreciate that we were able to not only let him know that regardless of what social media says, you know, I know they're trying to make us think we're supposed to hate you, but we don't. And additionally, it was a learning experience for my students because they were able to see and experience firsthand how the media can warp the perception of an opinion or a person. Because, uh, like I said, to think that these students who attend these illustrious institutions aren't smart enough to make their own decisions, so much so that they would only show support for Trump because he bought chicken sandwiches and milkshakes. It's offensive. That in itself is the most disturbing part of it all, especially when you think about the fact that it was mainly urban media outlets that were doing everything in their power to turn other black people against these young black kids. Yeah, there you are. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, I just, how dare they think yeah. outside the Democratic plantation? I, I, again, she she made the point of the media saying, well, they were only supporting him because he gave him free chicken sandwiches. I mean, how insulting is that? I mean, seriously, I, I, well, I can't believe I mean, it's just it's the same media that says they're too stupid or lazy to get a, an idea. Yeah, yeah, right. Again. Uh, and uh, throwing yourself under the uh, under the bus, the the guy who plays Jack Reacher, uh, is, is just they, they, they canceled the series on uh, Amazon. And Pete was a, you watched it. Was, the guy's a great I don't actor. know if they've canceled it, but if they did, I wouldn't surprise. Well, me they may not have apparently. And this guy, this actor who plays Jack Reacher, has just come out and said, "Well, you idiots who vote for Donald Trump, he's a rapist. He's a criminal. He has no business running for office. Uh, wasn't he condemning yeah. Christians now yeah, or evan- something? Evangelicals, yeah. you're, you're all reprehensible and all this." Uh, Screw he's you, a, buddy. Uh, what, and he's playing Jack Reacher, which is probably the most uh, toughest oh. all-American killer of, you know, defending of uh, human rights forever. Oh, my God. He's got a movie coming out with Henry Cavill <laughs> where they play World War II commandos. No. Who wants to see that now? I, I don't understand why. I mean, he, people are going to be reacting to him, but they, it won't make me go to see his movie. I'm not watching him anymore. God, it's like Biden saying we're going to start appealing now from now on. We're going to appeal to the LBGTQ community. That'll put us over the top. So by by, by picking the one group that is like four percent of the less population. than one percent. <laughs> oh my God! Oops. Oh, that's probably oh spam risk. Well, oh, I'm not going to answer. If I was that. a dog, I'd be barking right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh my God, it's Friday, boys. Oh God, flounder. It's almost time to go. Uh, Kevin Pete flounder saying here. Here's a little funny for you. Things are better now. People over forty back me up on this. Back me up on how sloppy. <laughs> and disorganized the world used to be. Remember when sunblock began? (laughs) Young people, there was no sunblock. There was suntan oil, and then the next week they were like, hey, that was lube for cancer. (laughs) Block your whole thing. White people were getting scorched, is my point. We were getting scorched. As a white person, you'd go outside, you knew it was time to go back in when you were like, do you smell meat? It was you. <laughs> and you know who doesn't care? My black friends. <laughs> I tried to tell my black friends, I'm like, dude, I've gotten second degree bubbly burns. <laughs> White people get skin cancer 30 times more than black people. And all my black friends are like, yeah, Neil, I'm having a hard time finding my passion for this. <laughs> you know what I'm starting to realize? I'm starting to realize that if you think about it, it's going to sound crazy, but if you think about it, the sun is basically the cops for white people. <laughs> Think about it. Follow us around everywhere we go. 
do this because of the color of our skin, <laughs> killing our cousins for no reason. <laughs> and then when I tell my black friends that the sun killed my cousin, they're like, well, what was he wearing? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and who's is that? Our, uh, our uh, about, that is Neil Brennan. Oh, Neil Brennan. I don't know the name. Anyway, pretty music. Flounder. I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Uh, hi to Miss Veronica. And uh, good Pete, luck with the television. Uh, I'll hi. need it. I'll keep you posted. And Pete Davis, you're going to have a ball. I hope. All right. Uh, it's all to the camera. Got to go. You're killing me. <laughs> See ya. Look out. Herp and a double herp and a herp. Huh? Coming home, Christine. Look out. Sing me, baby. Start your day the right way with Tug, Rhino, and Los on The Morning Extra every morning from 6 to 10 a.m. on WFOM Marietta Extra 1063.